Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is your Astro Shaman Pernell Bobby. We are doing an impromptu with Solar Systems. They've been on the channel once. Joe is coming back today. He is currently backstage getting ready for this transmission on the Mars opposition to Pluto and Aquarius. So without further ado, I'm going to bring him in. Like I said, this is one of these retrograde themes going on between Aquarius and Pluto being retrograded right now because we tried to do something prior. It didn't work. But now we're here. It's back. And I'm going to go ahead and give him some love. Joe, what's going Damn. on, my man? Oh, I'm glad to be back, man. Excited to talk about these transits. Actually, uh, the first point I want to bring up is the difference in what we actually titled this thing. Um, I forget. What was the... Uh, let me see what you titled it again. It was something about, like, justice and... I think I... I, I think I... Oh, oh. Oh, you're talking about on the actual flyer. You're talking about a flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, like, I thought I thought they were both interesting and actually pertained to what the alignment was, but I just wanted to bring up the difference because it shows the difference of perspective, which will give everybody, you know, a more holistic view of what's actually going on. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah. Give it to us. Give it to us. Yeah. So you said distraction and justice uh, and uh -huh. limits, and I said uh, pride and prejudice. And I guess I'll, um, I mean, you know, obviously you can go into why you said that, but I like sure. what stuck to me up, what um, stuck out to me about like pride and prejudice was like obviously mars and leo pride drunk on godly power walking around talking shit saying whatever and mm -hmm. then um you know pluto and leo that's like the perfect example of like prejudice whatsoever so I, I mean i know we had a short time to come up with a description but i wanted to come up with a bunch of witty things from the actual book that i could throw into the description but i can always do that later but um yeah why i said prejudice is because um uh, aquarius you know aquarius is all about sure. putting people's mentalities and boxes having their own stubborn mentality in a box and having that aligned with pluto and like basically like prejudging what's going on and then um prejudging in terms of like you know off those like ideals that you already created about someone's mentality and how you box that in that's like pluto and aquarius to a t so sure. like, having that opposition between those two of being like super prideful and like what we talked about before and having that prejudice on those mentalities of understanding what people are actually going through it's mm -hmm. like uh, I, f I just felt like it was a perfect title and a perfect understanding of what's actually going on Oh yeah, I'm I'm loving it. We already got an Aquarius in the chat, so I'm 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 happy to hear what uh I I don't know everybody in the chat was an Aquarius, but if you're an Aquarius, drop you where your Aquarius is at, drop the planet, drop the house, drop the degree, because I know both Joe and myself, we love to get super specific, we love to get nerdy for mm -hmm. Aquarius and do the same thing for Leo. So wherever you have Leo, what planet, what house, what degree, drop them all. Um, I have a Jupiter and Leo, for example, so I can go ahead and type that. I don't know what Joe might have. Um, but that said, I, I think this is going to be a super interesting talk. I honestly feel like this is going to be a talk today that's going to stir up a lot of emotion. It's going to be a Love talk it. today that's going to... I, I felt it. I felt it early. I feel like it's, the opposition, I'm here for it right now. Like, this is not going to be... I feel like this is not going to be one of my sweet talks, if I'm being honest. This is not going to be one of my, like... <laughs> one of my, like, I'm here to soothe you and bring you down to earth kind of talks. Honestly, I'm just going to give it to you raw. And it's one of the reasons why I feel like I felt called to Joe today. Because, <laughs> I was about because to Joe's ready for the smoke. I mean, it is what it is. And when I when I see Leo, he spoke about it on the drunken power. And even back in Gene Keys, this particular degree coming from the ending of cancer, it kind of is the last two to three degrees of the cancer. And it is in a transformation phase going to the first two degrees, I believe, of Leo. And it's gate 56. And it's like, at the shadow frequency, and when I say shadow frequency, understand that none of the shadows that I'm going to mention are good or bad. This is transcending some sense of moralistic compass. It's not about good and bad. But when I say the shadow being distraction for this Leo energy, it oftentimes equates to like an internal distraction or an external distraction, right? An external distraction could be anybody we're talking to, could be any substance that we're involved with, anything that puts us in a state of fantasy, that puts us to not really see how we're externalizing because Leo is a masculine energy. It externalizes its drama. It externalizes its shadows at times. And the shadow work is done coming from cancer. So cancer is like, it, it's in its private space. It is a little more intro, intro, introverted. It really takes the time to hold on to its impulses. And Leo is that first sign coming out of, okay, look, I've held my impulses and now I need to try things out in variety. Uh, and, and I'm going to do this pridefully. And even if I'm wrong, I'm a I'm a hold on to it as if I'm still the top notch because this is what it takes for me to differentiate myself from authority. And I find that like this is one of the major things behind Leo is like it looks to differentiate itself separate from parents. It's about 14 to 20 years age, and this is that 
but you know, dad, mom, I need to be me. I need to do sports. I need to. I get that you don't like football and because it's physical, but I want to play football. Do this or this. it's all about this popularity contest where Leo is in a space where it's trying to earn its accolades. It's trying to earn its popularity. And I find that with Leo energy and you put it in Mars now, the conflict can kind of come where it's like, are the people respecting how it is trying to honor itself? And I say keyword trying where mm. I feel like Aquarius is already old enough. It's coming in at like 60 something years old. It's already old enough where like, it's not trying so overtly to gain its accolades. It just kind of has a little bit more of an entitlement. Like, look, I already got them. Like I'm, I'm not this young Leo, I'm not my young counterpart, but I still have a childlike energy. And so I feel like this is gonna be kind of one of these one, two tugs and pulls between the two. And I only express Leo side, but let's stop there and see what you got for the feedback on it. You talking about in the chat or me? Oh, Leo in the night. No, 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 you, 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 you. No, I was talking to you. I was talking to you. I just wanted, oh, to, pause. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to give it a pause moment and, and hear from the from the left to the right. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of like Leo, what you were saying about Venus is we're like in terms of like the actual, I guess, um, the technical term is more galactic astrology when we're actually dealing with like the degrees sure. and the understanding. We're moving mm -hmm. from the Canis Minor constellation, which are stars like Gomesha, Procyon. You know, the uh, the other throat of the dog that really like, you know, I, I got my personal feelings towards Procyon for extraneous reasons. But yeah, we're really transiting from that like Canis Minor to the actual Cancer constellation, which I think is like interesting for what you said about the like kind of like youthful, like I want to be me energy. And uh, I'm trying to think of what the actual alignment is that everybody has at 14. It's either, um, I think it's a, uh, it's like, it's either a, no, it can't be a Uranus square. It's like, um, I think it's like that first square you ex yeah no it's the first Saturn square where you just want to rebel against the structure system of what was like brought into with the world with you you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so why I find it's interesting that you say that is because moving from like you know Canis Minor which is like more of like a younger dog like kind of like a puppy all the way mm. to Cancer right where it's just like you want to feel at home in yourself so it's sure. kind of like moving along from that like that like puppy dog love to being like you know you need to show me respect you need to show me pride that you actually want to like you know be with me in terms of in like a relationship like sense you know so mm -hmm. it's really just that like forceful energy if you want to truly care about your passage again you really want to like bring that fire back but it's kind of weird because of all of these actual constellations that are actually occupying the space of leo it's going to put us through like this weird rigmarole but speaking about the degrees of the actual opposition itself it's just um i don't know i just find it interesting of how like you actually said that and it really just like translates the actual constellations that are occupying that space at the moment of time bro it's all linked yeah yeah it's yeah. all linked like no matter what system no matter what profile what platform and i feel like one of these oppositions are are are, are between the two of them is really getting our ideas to be expressed among others mm -hmm. and realize that there can be a disagreeance for sure. And that that disagreement does not equate to war or stress that has to be associated with a negative connotation no. because it does create a sense of war. It does create pressure and the stress. But what is it trying to break us through? And this is the key, like what part of our soul wants to shine and how does the, shine, the soul shine after it's been enshrouded in darkness? And I feel like, again, like when you look at like just the the development between Aries going from Aries to Cancer and then Leo coming next. Mm -hmm. If I just look at that little segment, it's like Cancer is in this place where it's looking to find its belonging within the family and it finds its its comfort, its its stability. It finds retreat within the family, within the home dynamic where it's like, look, home, which at that time frame is still parents, family, you know, it makes me feel like I belong somewhere. And in this belonging, I can kind of introspect. I can recognize my impulses and recognize, you know, how am I forming a sense of morality within myself? And it's like, when we come from this, it's still a very individual process. But For Leo sure. was the first interpersonal sign. It's like the first sign that's hopping out among others where it's like, look, now I have friends. And if I don't have friends, I want friends. And if I want friends, I want to have the same sense of belonging I felt with my family, but separate from my family, separate from authority, separate from guardianship. Now I want to, in a sense, gain that authority and, and feel honorable amongst individuals that are like-minded, that are weird, and they have also explored their eccentric nature. They've also learned what their quirks were. And it's like within our little clique, we 
can shine together. And I find like what the opposition can really bring is um, when, when we did not get that space, let's just say from our parents, when we didn't get that space, well, now what happens? Because Leo is very confident, but the key thing is if your parents from that age of 14 to 20 years old give you the space to explore a, a, a certain sense of variety that is what essentially made you popular among your friends because your parents let you and without too much resistance say, hey, look, go ahead and differentiate yourself. And I feel like if that did not happen, this is what the opposition is going to really start to excite as well as create more pressure and more tension with. It's like, okay, well, that did not happen. Now, because it's so prideful still, right? Like Leo in this, like because it still has its pride, that pride can go from like a positive sense of pride and into and, and like a negative sense of entitlement where it's like, now, since I'm not getting this praise because I didn't have the exploration, the, the, uh, the, the chance and the opportunity to explore, mm -hmm. I'm going to create drama. And I feel like this is the yeah. other side of Leo that most people kind of associate. And they always look at Leo's like, oh, I hate Leo. And Leo's are so dramatic and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I hear more bad things about Leo, sadly, than I hear good. And yeah. I feel like this is the big issue because it's like, how many of our parents from that age are giving us the freedom? Or how many are our parents at that same age from 14 to 20, right? We're... Mm -hmm. I'm now, let's say I'm the Leo in that age bracket, I'm differentiating myself. Okay, great. But I'm triggering my dad. I'm triggering my mom, who's my guardian now, because they didn't get to differentiate themselves in that. So it's like, now do they hold you down? Do they not let you separate yourself and then feel enriched, right? And, and experience like what it feels like to have that intoxicated level of godliness, the intoxicated level of like pride in yourself, a high worth a high self-esteem that's kind of the evolution of Taurus, self-esteem, self-worth. And mm -hmm. it's like, this is when I feel like the confidence, you no longer have the confidence to go date somebody. You don't have the confidence to go walk up and say, hey, look, can I get your number? You don't have the confidence to say, yo, Joe, you want to do this live? I got some new ideas that, you know what? I feel like you and I can talk about, you and I can share a, a stage and we can generously kind of go back and forth. You don't have that confidence anymore with Leo if in youth that was tampered with. And I feel like this is one of the things that the opposition to Pluto is going to bring up these power struggles and it's going to allow us to start objectively looking at situations and realize, yo, this is silly. Like, I, I really don't want to keep holding on to this. It's not my battle. This is my this is my dad's battle. This is my uncle's battle. This is my, you know what I mean? Whoever was your guardian, no, no, side frame. This is their battle, but I've been holding it. And this fixed energy, it's like, look, the pressure is kind of making me want to boil a little bit where I need to let this go somehow. Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. I really like it. But the two things that kind of popped up for me with that was the classic trope of one Aries ascendance. And then mm. also like the uh, all the energy that built up from Saturn and Aquarius. But I'll start with the Aries ascendant. So when you were talking about like, um, yeah, like you know, just like the whole thing with the parents and like not getting like what you needed in terms of be the person that you needed to be and like really having your own confidence with all this stuff. Mm. It kind of bring up the classic trope of like, you know, Aries ascendants and cancer in the fourth house, right? And then mm -hmm. like feeling not really realizing how much comfort they actually draw from being that pioneer or being that leader for people. So mm -hmm. it sort of seems like that would be a great lesson for everybody that's actually watching to really pay attention to that trope that they actually go through in terms of realizing like, where do you actually draw your pride from? Is it mm -hmm. a sustainable source? Is it actually from within? Or is it for you having that ability to go out and be a pioneer mm -hmm. and being it for other people? And neglecting the actual ability that you need to pioneer within yourself, to, you know, pioneer that feeling of self-worth and actually having that feeling and not like, you know, really needing that like Libra in the seventh house energy of like having people bring balance in your own life externally, you know, mm -hmm. that's sort mm -hmm. of like what I find interesting in terms of what you bring up. And then the other thing in terms of the Pluto opposition is I think a lot of people are going to be built up from that Saturn and Aquarius energy of like, uh, I kind of like to explain it as like more of a lower vibrational version is like, you know, everybody's out here searching for their tribe, right? And the internet sure. has done a lot of great things to find their tribe and stuff. But the one thing that Saturn and Aquarius kind of like, you know, put people in a hindrance against is mm. they're, you know, using the collective strength of a group around a certain fixated idea, aka old people in a Facebook group like Q or something, and really just deriving all of their, you know, stubborn ideologies from someone else's thoughts you get what i'm saying here uh, so yeah, like, yeah 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 so i feel like that's going to be like a huge spark for like all of these people actually like 
leading into what you said of having that issue with their parents and like basically all that time that they spent building that up in Saturn and Aquarius is going to be a pretty big Saturnian band-aid that might be ripped off during this time with the Pluto transit. No, I, I, I agree because this is one of the things, right? Like eccentricity mm -hmm. is one of the key commonalities between Leo and Aquarius. And it's like, well, where are we just imitating? Mm -hmm. Right? Like where are we imitating? Because it's comfortable in that space, right? Like, it's like, look, at least here, I'm not going to get any opposition. I'm not going to get any smoke. I'm not going to get any hate, you know, but the sad part, the downside, because this new moon was just happening in Taurus, right? Where mm. it kind of activated this gate eight and it's literally all about individuality, like, and, and attaching to a positive sense of what that individuality is, like literally mm. taking your own, your own approach, something you have. And right. Taurus, the Taurus I have, right, is such an internal process, right? Like as a feminine energy, it's this internal um, receiving energy of like, well, this is what I, this is literally what makes me unique before mm. we get to Leo. And it's like, Taurus has a different version of stubborn than Leo. Like Leo has had a little more practice and gone through the gamut of itself before it introduced to others. Taurus didn't get to introduce to others yet. Taurus is just yeah. for itself. So it's like, look, this is me. This is my natural talent. These are my natural abilities. Mm -hmm. These are the positive or the negative images that I've held on to, and I hold them because this is my sense of safety, sense of security, just being me. Because at the end of the day, I'm me, and I feel like what you had just said is um is really is really critical. I I, I even want to say right now in the astrology community, this is a huge one, because without any disrespect, this is what I'm seeing: copy and paste. It's just copy and paste. I'm, mm -hmm. and, and, and I say that with no disrespect. There's an overwhelming amount of copy and paste within the astrology networking community. And For I sure. don't think that that's bad. There is going to be an expiration date. And this is going to be the major thing. There's going to be a point where some will continue to individuate and separate themselves. And some will stay within this mainstream format of whatever astrology is today. And that's gonna that's gonna hurt, right? Because when you think Leo, one of the things that comes to mind is popularity. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, what makes somebody popular? Like, what makes the jock popular? What makes the dancer popular? What makes the singer popular? It's like, well, at the end of the day, their voice is their voice. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, yeah. if I try to hit the same notes as Selena Gomez, I'm gonna always fail. But if I try to hit the notes of Pernell Bobby, you well, she got nothing. She got nothing on me. Yeah. Like, like that's that's the simplicity. This is the simplicity, right? Like, she got nothing on me. And so, you know, again, I'm saying it just from the astrology community because this is part of what it is. Mm. Um, I've seen it happen within human design as well, and that was four years ago when I watched this happen in Bali, and that was mm. one of the reasons why I was like, mm -mm. I stayed away, and I didn't even fully know why I stayed away. If I'm being honest, I, well, I Bali's whole other story in terms of the spiritual community. I'm sure you're well. Bali's a whole another story in the spiritual community. Yes. Hey, you can't you can't good vibes everything. You can't good vibes everything, but they do. <laughs> that but they do. They, you know, it's like peace, love, and light. I started hating that whole one, two, three phase. It was just like I hate it now. Um, I I, I don't even really hear it that much anymore now. And it's one of the major things. So if we if we kind of if we kind of backtrack, all right. If I think about we talked a little, we talked about Leo, okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 one of the things before I move into Aquarius on that side, so we can understand that side of the opposition, is mm -hmm. Leo at gate 56, this is why, I don't think I put this on the title, but I want it to, I don't think it fit. Intoxication, did I put that word by chance? Did you see that? I don't know, I don't I think, think I did. I put it in something else, but I think- Distra it's distract it's Distraction, good. justice, and limits, right? Yeah. So the justice and the limits actually equate more to the, the, the Aquarian side, and we'll get to that. For sure. But intoxication is this, this very God level frequency of Leo. And 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 and, 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 it, and it's not as simple as drunk on power. I feel like there's a there's a quick response to it, which would be like yeah. drunk on power. But I think it's not that simple. Like the well, I'm kind of, from, uh, not to cut you off, but I think it comes no, from the low key exaltation of Leo in Neptune, where it's like they're this so part of it. their own personal vision that like they this just create their own illusion, and you're just like, all right, we'll see you in two weeks when you come back to reality. This is a part of it. And this is one of the things I, I love that I love that you brought the Neptune up because mm -hmm. I love the fact that Leo is exalted in Neptune. I feel like it explains 
the reason why it's the strength card in tarot. Mm. Are you familiar with tarot? I think the I think the Neptune aspect is why the strength card is Leo because what is the strength card? It's a woman, it's a lion, right? And mm. she's holding back the power of the lion, but she's doing it with grace and ease, right? She's not tugging, she's not pulling. And a part of that symbolization and, and interpretation of the strength card is that like, okay, how can you recognize your soul urge? But again, you're so in control of your power and your impulses because thank God the cancer prior that you're not moving like Aries. You're not taking your impulse to the max on day one or in the first second, zero to 60. Leo is a fixed fire where it's like, look, one of the biggest difference between Pisces and Leo in this instant, when I look up at the, the Neptunian aspect, it's like, look, Pisces is still water and is mutable. So it has this very, very magical ability to create and manifest. That one, I think no one will ever argue. But fire, huh? What's up? No, you just look like you were about to say button. I just got there first. No, 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 no. I, I think nobody would ever argue that. Mm -hmm. And I think I did say, but, but fire, that was mm -hmm. a, but, but fire and fixed energy, not mutable water, fire mm -hmm. and fixed energy. It's willing to take a risk on the dream. It's willing sure. to believe the delusion, but with action. And this is one of the major differences because I find a lot of Pisces will believe the delusion and they'll stay in the delusion. And there's not, it's, it could take time to, be cardinal and and push like because mm. at a certain point right the opposite Pisces, you got to virgo this shit like you have to ground it somehow you have yeah. to bring it into reality because otherwise it'll come and then it'll disappear and this happens so frequently with pisces they get their dream they get their dream guy they get their lover and it disappears and it's like well oh yeah you didn't realize that relationships take work <laughs> like like great relationships you got it but it takes work you can't just be in love with somebody and that's going to be enough. It does not work. And I feel like Leo has that sustainability when I look at that. And I feel like this is why the strength card plays in. So if I kind of step back into it, you're I right. You Describe the positive aspect of the intoxication you were talking about. That was it. Yeah. That was it. That literally is it. It's like Leo has the ability yeah. to recognize the, because Aquarius has this air energy where it can be objective outside mm -hmm. the objective outside the objective i always look at it as like it can it can astral project outside of its astral projection outside of its astral projection and it can see this oh, the too, cosmos right yeah, from like yeah. way out here mm -hmm. and leo has a part of this ability and so when i look at this it's like leo's intoxication at this god level frequency it can see how silly and foolish life is it can recognize the comedy and the drama of life and it realizes this is hilarious. <laughs> it just looks at life, it looks yeah. at people arguing at war and all that. It's like, this is, this is hilarious. Like, this is a comical drama. This is a tragedy that is something to laugh about because it realizes I'm just sitting in a seat and this is what makes it fun. I'm not really trying to control it. And it's the Neptunian part of Leo. It's like, I'm not really trying to control it. Like divinity is working. I'm not really in charge. And this is what allows it to witness its character as a role, as an actor while still being in the human body. And it has that part of that Aquarian counterfeit. And so I feel like the Leos that can, can respect that and recognize that, as a part of their gifts, their natural innate abilities and gifts coming from Neptune, also sideline Aquarius on a shadow frequency. This becomes that intoxication that now everybody is like, yo, you know what? That Leo is in, has so much light, so much joy, not because they're transmuting the sunlight, but because they can be enshrouded by complete and absolute not knowing, unknowing, like mm. the emptiness, the void, the, 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 the etheric space. And it can well, just I mean, sit like, in that. Well, I mean, like, well, I mean, like, that's their whole deal, you know. The whole point is they don't need any external vision. That's like what they do. That's what they're incarnated for. That's what all Leos are here for. To have the vision for people to hold on to it, regardless of what's going on. Mm. I think this is the magic, you know. When I, I, I had to really like take more and more time to just sit for myself and like feel into Leo because, like I said, I've met so many people when they talk about Leo. All I hear is bad things if i'm being honest like I, I don't hear many good things i don't and that could just be how how is manifesting in my life that's a strong possibility but most yeah. times i'm just listening if i'm being honest i'm just listening sure. and i'm like i don't really believe this 
like, and I've lived with Leos. Like, I've had a Leo that I lived with, and I'm like, she was such an awesome person. Like, I, I, it, it was just so confusing. I'm like, she was awesome. Everything about her was dope. So I feel like this is the the Leo aspect where when we put Mars in the picture now, where mm-hmm. Mars and Leo now come in, um, I do well, believe I mean, that's in a, the- that's, a, that, that's something that we kind of got some expertise on being with our fifth house placements. Oh, a thousand percent with the mm-hmm. Aries, Aries in the fifth. Mm-hmm. So, so give me your Aries in the fifth. Um, my areas in the fifth, I mean, you know, I got my moon there. I got, uh, like, no, no, no. Give me, give me your interpretation as somebody who resonates with areas in the fifth. Oh, okay. I mean, it's just like, I can speak to a lot of the intoxication on power of where it's just like, you know, like sometimes you want to be like so many people buy into my hype. I don't even have to buy into my hype too, but (laughs) that doesn't really happen for areas in the fifth house. Even when people do buy into your hype, like I've literally Mm -hmm. had people walk in and bow down to me. And then I'll just go on an entire week long bender of like, I'm amazing. I can't believe I did this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You kind of like, you sort of like bounce between like, uh, like where you're just like, all right, I need to humble myself. I need to humble myself. I need to humble myself. And then you just can't do it because you just like, when you try to humble yourself, you're really just like pouring gas on the fire because more people are being like, oh, wow, you're that amazing and you're humble. And then you start believing in your own myth even more. But then it's weird because you convince yourself that it is real, even when you know that you probably should be more humble and you just keep going back, forth, back, forth and trying your best to like calm down. But you really just can't do it because you're just like, I, but I am doing these amazing things. I am making it happen. And then you're just like, eventually it just fizzles out at some point. You got to get a new wave because you're just not hype on something anymore. Maybe that's more of like my Gemini interpretation of it, how you're just bouncing between. And that really yeah. lasts onto the excitement. But like, oh man. I mean, and then I got my a Yod and my Sun Moon Ascendant, so that might add a little extra to it. But like, it's just like, you can try as, sometimes you can just try as hard as you want to be humble. And all that's going to do is just lead into the problem. So maybe you really have to like, I don't know, at least for my personal opinion, you have to double down on your intoxicated egoness to the point that it blows up in your face so you can learn how to calm down. But that just might be mm. Scorpio Ascendant. That's my take on it though. It's a it's a it's a weird it's, battle, it's, especially in youth. I could I I, I, I could definitely see it. Um mm-hmm. I, I definitely can see it. And I, I think the last thing you said is the key words. It's like I feel like this is Aries as like two of wands three of wands before Hmm. it becomes emperor like Ah. right yeah yeah, yeah. i I feel like i feel like at a point it becomes emperor and it's like well what gets it to the emperor because i have an aries fifth house moon and you have an aries fifth house moon as well right yeah and apparently hannah does too and she has a fifth house moon oh what the hell is going on no is that serious she has a fifth house moon or is it fifth house stellium ah Using plastic. No, no, like, no. Really I think up. I think she I think she's fifth house stellium, but her moon might be a different house. I don't remember mm. where her rising. She's she's Virgo rising, so she, that's more eighth house. Okay. Um, and so no, but I, I totally get it. So the major thing is I think this is this is a time frame. And I've been trying to tell people, like, I think I was talking to you about this earlier, right? Where like when I was younger, mm. everything you just said, and I'm saying this Aries Sun, Aries Moon, Aries Mercury on the fifth. And it's like those all being conjunct within. I mean, two of them are at the same degrees, exact conjunction, sun and moon, sun and mercury. Yeah. And then my and then my moon is a four degree orb, right? Okay. And so I feel like in my you, I could not separate. Right? Like I didn't grow with a separate moon from a sun sign. I didn't grow with these conflicting light and dark shadow personality. I didn't grow with a conflicting mindset. It mm-hmm. was all merged into one. And Ooh. To be honest, that was really hard to understand what that even meant for the longest time, even when I came to astrology. But mm. when I reflect back on my you, um, in all sincerity, one, this equated to a lot of fights. I just <laughs> got to be honest. Like I've, had, I've gotten to a lot of physical fist fights. It, it's just the truth. I've gotten to, I've seen a lot. I've mm-hmm. been a lot. I've started pretty much none of them. Even Bali? No, this is like I said in my youth. By the time I was in Bali, I was in my healing stage. And mm. Bali for me was a Neptune line. So this right. was my sur- this is my surrendering, if anything. If anything, it was surrendering everything you just said. Like everything you just said, it was that time frame when like all of it was just like I'm healing, I'm letting it all go, I'm recognizing the ego, I'm recognizing how it's how it can be powerful, I'm recognizing how, how it can be debilitating. I'm mm. talking like like younger, 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 like high school, high school for sure into like college where eventually i got arrested enough where i was like okay look ah. this is gonna start to stick and i was yeah, like you- this is 
this is the bigger problem, right? I'm like, okay, look, I can't really, I have no more um, get out of jail free cards. And that's you essentially what happened. Coast? I grew up on the East Coast. Oh, okay. So you know about bathroom fights. Bathroom fights, I know about bathroom fights. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I did not get involved in many bathroom fights. I have seen few, but I mostly walked away from them. There were so many. They were all the time. They were all the time. I got into cafeteria fights. I don't know how to explain it. (laughs) So we talk about Aries in the fifth. I got into cafeteria fights. So it's Uh, like, it's not in this secluded little place. It's like, look, everybody's going to understand. Do not mess with me because this is the result. And I didn't consciously, if I'm being honest, I didn't consciously, I wasn't a conscious decision. It was more of like, I'm fed up. Like, it was like, look, like y'all picking on me. (laughs) I ain't saying nothing. But, and y'all getting the wrong impression. (laughs) <laughs> well now we got to end it and it kind of was one of these like i just was fed up if i'm being honest and that's how most times equated just got fed up mm. now again like i said this is in the younger younger stage eventually i realized um one that i don't really like violence that's the simple that's one of the big wild realizations like i really don't like being violent but i also yeah. had to realize that i was addicted to violence and this is something that was hard to understand especially so young it's like it was the only outlet that i knew it was like, you mess with me, you got to get put down. And it was just that simple. But again, it's a part of the environment we grew up in. Like, I mean, I'm watching this show on TV and, and, and it's like literally all black people. And it's like, it's a very common thing in black homes. It's like, you don't ever start a fight or if somebody messes with you, you finish them. And you better not come home and get your ass whooped. And if you got your ass whooped, I'm going to whoop your ass again. I kid you not, every black person, at least... Maybe not every single black person, right? But the majority that you're going to meet, their parents probably had the same rule. Mm. Their parents probably had the same rule. And I just heard it on TV last night, and somebody said the same thing. Matter of fact, on the Boston Celtics, you're, you know, you're in Philly. Boston Celtics, the guy was in the interview. He just did the playoff game, and he said the same. He said everything I just said, he said the same thing. Damn. So that was just part of the mentality. But again, it's part of a survival mindset. It's part of a survival mentality where like our parents really knew that our son or our daughter, they might not come home. And it's more important for them to come home than worrying about them getting in trouble in school. It's like, we need them to live. And it's like, that's a very different survival mindset. So again, that's a, a wild, wild tangent. But I mean, it explains the areas in the fifth house quite well. It explains the area in the fifth house at that stage. And that's mostly what I wanted to kind of, because eventually it, it holds its impulses. And like I said, my Mars being a cancer, mm. one, it contributes to the violence, quite frankly. But on the other side, it can hold the impulses of Aries. Yeah. So if I get that impulse where like, yo, I want to knock this guy out, I can stop, pause, and reflect and be like, first off, yo, you got no more get out of jail free cards. And that was probably the real first thing that stopped me. Because until that happened, mm. in my mind, life wasn't much set. It was just like, look. You don't mess with me and we're fine. And I'm a happy person. Like, I love to love. Like, I don't like fighting, but I will love, I must. And so in my mind, I can tell some part of this was like also past life, just barbaric, blah, 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 blah. Mm. But it's like, in my mind, it's like, these are just the rules. And you shouldn't get in trouble for such things. You shouldn't get in trouble for defending yourself. That was how my mind was working. Where it's like, I can't start it, but I will finish it. But that's how my mind worked. So eventually I had to realize really where gate 60 comes in, a.k.a. Pluto and Aquarius right now, where it's at. Just the first couple of degrees where it speaks about limitations. It speaks about rules. It speaks about structures of society where all the rules, the structure, limitations says, you know what? It doesn't matter, Purnell, if your mind says that. That's not reality. That's not the world we live in. It's mm-hmm. not the timeline we live in. Maybe if you were living in the Middle Ages, that flew. Maybe your past lives, you could do that. You can live like that. But now we have rules. Right. Now you have, you have, you can go to jail, right? You can lose job opportunities. You can, it's all these kind of themes. Uh oh. I think that's my, I think that's my water guy. Hola, buenas. Hmm. I'm going to turn on pedo lights. Yo, I, I, I need you to take it for a second. I think that's my water guy outside. Yeah, I got you. I'm going to turn on cool. lights. Yeah, we, we, we get we get the water delivered. We can't drink from the faucet out here. Okay, here we go. All right, take it over. Oh, Wait, wrong one. Yeah, Thank you. you. 
Okay, guys, so Pluto and Aquarius, right? Now we can talk specifically about the actual degrees that we're experiencing. So if I remember correctly, I don't think we made it. Hey, boy! Ooh, Dan, still got the audio. I don't think we actually made it to a full-on, like, first or second degree of Pluto and Aquarius. But the interesting thing about that is we're actually dealing with some unique stars that we're transiting with that. So the first early star that we're now dealing with actually in retrograde is the actual Cygnus. And what we transited through that is the star called Albiro. Albiro is a part of Cygnus. Cygnus is the actual swan constellation in the sky. And what that kind of means is it's sort of showing you what it is to be, you know, beauty and deal with beauty, right? There's a lot of parts of it. If you actually get a specific star on your moon sign, it deals with more specific aspects of the swan. But for the purposes of Pluto, what we're dealing is with more calmness, more beauty, the actual understanding of that cusp between Aquarius and Capricorn of where you're learning the balance and you're living in the exact in-between of the masculine and feminine aspects of Saturn. So when you're kind of dealing with that in-between aspect, you kind of deal with um, is like the Metatron energy. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Metatron. Metatron's like this, you know, he's not exactly an archangel, but he lives in between like the ninth and the zero realm where he kind of just like watches over all experience. So it's a very unique aspect to sort of sit in between the aspect of having Pluto, the planet of power and control, dealing with Saturn, and then dealing with that balance of that exact in-between space, right? Because when you're an angel that can truly experience anything and sees all experience, you have no need for power. So this is where it gets really interesting. We're actually dealing with that exact cusp energy of the opposition of being in the space of, hey, we're looking at this, or hey, we're looking at that, but we're maintaining balance with the actual structure system and power that we're experiencing. So really pay attention to what we're going through over the next couple of weeks, especially when Pluto's really, really dipping back into that exact cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius because it will remove yourself from power in a way and sort of exalt the actual Leo energies. Hey, we're back. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I went on a whole long tangent that I don't know if I explained perfectly, but we're out here trying. Cool. Well, what was it about? I was talking about how uh, when we're actually dealing with the early degrees of Pluto, we're, we, we haven't exactly gotten to the space of where I was going to get into Oh, we just got into Aquila, the actual eagle constellation, and we're going to be angling the star Altair at about two degrees of Aquarius, where that's all about spiritual warfare, blah, 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 but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the tangent I did get into is the unique experience of the cusp between uh, Aquarius and Capricorn and how that kind of deals with like the Metatron energy of being able to oversee all experience whatsoever, which is an interesting mm. place to be when you balance both aspects of Saturn because – when you do get in that space, you you have the structure, you have the structure you created perfectly, and you have, you have the structure like, you know, oh okay, then I explained it perfectly. All right, word. So it's like you have the ability to create the structure to receive the status that you want, and you have the ability to push out and be stubborn with the status that you want, which I think is the perfect exaltation of the Metatron energy in this realm, because that's a true space where you can experience also what need do you have for power. So then mm. it's like a really weird like kind of like blend between like that we're going to be experiencing with Pluto on that exact cusp dealing with this opposition. Because I feel as though it's like when you said Pluto is like, you know, that like 60 year old person, it's just going to watch because it's already been through that experience. It already knows. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then it's like in some weird way, the Leo side of that is going to take over during this period that we're in. So I just, I don't no, know, I found that interesting. No, no, no. So that's smack on point because this is again, the synchronicities, like even back in human design, the the lower the lower frequencies that you got to get through first is like the limitations of basic human reality okay before we get to metatron and you know x y and z because it's like that doesn't exist in you know governmental buildings like the secretary of states and the president's white house and people passing laws and sanctions and blah 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 right so it's like but when we get beyond that which is what these limitations are essentially when we embrace the limits that stop our conscious awareness to be able to actually not just talk about mm -hmm. everything you just said, but to yeah. actually embody the frequencies where essentially we, I don't know what the right word is evaporate, but like, like Lucy, have you seen Lucy? Yeah. Okay. You see how she kind of evaporated into, into dust, mm -hmm. if you will. And she became a part of everything and nothing and been able to start to, she just became one with the universe in a sense. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the same gate 60 and this Pluto bringing us through this like genetic mutation at a physical level where we can actually find justice, literally justice. Mm -hmm. And justice is not in some moral law sense. It's actually superseding 
good and bad and morals all together. And it's like one, these are one of the things. This is a little more complicated, I'll explain in a moment, but this is one of the things that when we supersede these this good, bad narrative, as well as polarities, mm. or even this shadow and light, like beyond those frequencies, like look. It doesn't even exist anymore. And this is when we can start to teleport. This is when our consciousness, we can literally pop up on Andromeda and like, wait, can I breathe here? And it's like, yeah, you can breathe here. We don't breathe. You know what I mean? It's like, we don't even, <laughs> like, we don't need water. You don't need food. And so it's like, this is actually part of how on the low frequency, when I see this opposition of Pluto and Aquarius with Mars, it's like, if we can take that drunken, godly state of Leo and realize that, oh my God, we're in this simulation which we just are in our own way, right? If we look at it from a fractal standpoint, it's yeah. like, okay, look, we're in this simulation. Life is now just freaking hilarious because why do people do that? And then it's just like, you get to like laugh in the back seat, but it's like that can help us align with kind of what you were saying a little bit with this Metatron frequency. It's like, okay, if we just look at the records, right? If we just look at our country, right? We start realizing, well, you know what? I really was a wizard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like I can cast spell. I can create blah, blah, blah as an alchemist. And it's like, it starts to break what we consider reality. But that also has to happen at such a collective level, right? Like if I, myself and you are the only two that can do that or recognize that, then it doesn't, it's not actually real in this particular reality. But when 8 billion of us do it together, Earth dissipates, at least our form on this planet. And now our, we can be formless mm -hmm. anywhere, anywhere. Hey, what's up, J-Lo? You, you, so, so is that anything? I, I kind of came in late from what you're saying, but for some reason, that's where it brought me. Is that anywhere close to what you were talking about? I mean, yeah, I just think it was from a different perspective that I have no concept of, but now I do. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, I thought it bounced off it perfectly, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. I feel like I explained my concept, and you just added on a story, and then you know, people got a more holistic view of what we were talking about. So there we go. And then while you were talking about like the, the about just like looking at the world as like a ha 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 ha, you know, what's going on type of thing. I, I thought of two stories, and I want to tell two random stories that have no like really connection to the spiritual aspect, but it just shows like how random the universe is if you truly do have that perspective. Hit us. Okay. So the first one is, is I was playing this video game with my friend and it makes no goddamn sense because it's like a mix of like, uh, like The Last of Us and like Fortnite. But we were basically building a tree house and we were chopping down these logs to build this tree house and he was sending them up to me on a zip line and I just thought it was cool. And then it was on the exact moment of the new moon and I said, Henry, we're going to do this when you buy a house and I bet you damn well that we're going to figure out a way to send logs up on a zip line. And then the second thing is um it's like uh, i've been rock climbing for like 11 or 12 years i don't know if you know but um mm -hmm. i think i talked to you about it before but mm -hmm. i was up in new york climbing and like it's like a common thing in the big wall community of like you, you just you just meet people on top of walls that you know from the gym like all the time i don't know why it happens this way i don't know mm -hmm. how it happens this way but i have not climbed a route that was over like 300 feet without meeting somebody that i know so mm -hmm. for example the last time this happened, I met two people I know from the gym at two separate times on this wall where we were waiting to do this crazy climb. So basically what happened was, is we were just sitting up there, we were waiting, and then I go, oh shit, I started right next to like some dude who's like the dad of a kid that's on like a, like a competitive climbing team. And I was like, yo, what's going on? I ain't seen you in like two years. And then I'm on this climb, waiting on this ledge, dealing with some people that are really stupid. So we ended up sitting on the ledge for like an hour. And to, to elaborate on how bored we were, we started whipping out the Pythagorean theorem to decipher how far it would take for us to get from <laughs> point eight point eight point eight. and like literally just like jump off. We like did the whole math on the acceleration and all that on like theoretical hypotenuses and all that shit. But then I hear this one name out of the corner of my ear and I'm just like, someone yelled O'Neal. And I was like, there's only like, I don't, I don't, one, I only know one O'Neal and two, I only know one O'Neal that climbs. So it has to be this motherfucker right here. And like, mm -hmm. Literally, he pulls, he, I see him coming down from the sky, rappelling down, and I'm just like, yup, that's him. And it just kind of like goes to show that like, that like, A, the climbing community is very small. And then B, you have no idea what the fuck is going on all the time. And here right. we go. I never would have expected that I woke up the day that I drove three hours to go to New York to climb, that I would run into two people I know, and then do a bunch of math from the 10th grade, deciphering 
the how <laughs> the acceleration of a zip line to a pool because we were bored. So definitely a random happened. story. Hilarious. What's the link? Why, why, why did you bring it up? Out of curiosity. Oh, I bring it up because when you like really get into that space of like looking at like, I guess like, I don't want to say the holographic universe, but looking at like your mental field is like, you know, kind of like the, the, the simulation that we're in. If you really remove yourself from the potential of what's going on, you uh -huh. can really just experience crazy things like that. And then that like, um, it also inspires the fact that like, I think a healthy level of detachment will get you a lot of places in life. It will. Yeah. And I, I feel like when you, when you put that back in frame with Aquarius, Mm -hmm. You know that healthy level of oh, attachment. That was a lick. That's an Aquarius story. It has no. That was real... yeah. That was the Aquarius story. Like when you yeah. put it in objective frameworks, it's like the best definition I've heard of detachment mm. is that nothing owns you. Mm. And it goes a little bit longer. I think it's in like the 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 Bhagavistana. I think like the the Bible of Hindu culture. Mm. I, I don't know what it is called exactly. Um, but for whatever reason, it says detachment isn't that. You own nothing. It's that nothing owns you. Mm. And then the phrase is longer than that, but it's the part that I remember. And when I start recognizing that, it's like, okay, so when you look at Aquarius, what is the detachment from? A lot of the detachment is from your career expertise. It's like, okay, it's not that, you know. I threw me for a loop. It's the career expertise, right? Because coming from Capricorn, we're looking to be the masters. And we're actually not just look because Virgo would be like we're working towards mastery, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll likely achieve it. But Capricorn is like, you're already, you, you've achieved it. You've achieved mastery. Now you're known as the top notch astrologer. Now mm -hmm. you're known as the first person to make it to the moon, right? As a career in NASA. Now, blah, blah, blah. You're known as it. So, but Aquarius, and I feel like what Pluto was about, Aquarius is this place where now you're like, okay. In human years, you're about 65 to 77 years old. And you're like, that doesn't matter anymore. Like, it, it, it does not matter that people know me as the top astrologer or, you know, um, the, the number one yoga expert. It doesn't matter anymore. And so now you become more charitable. And this is the other side of Leo's generosity, where it's mm -hmm. like, Leo doesn't have the same accolades that a lifetime of Aquarius getting ready to die in Pisces has accumulated. Aquarius is like, look, I've accumulated these things and now I can use my extra resources, which is part of Saturn's influence and resources. It's like I can use my resources that I've used or, or that I've gained at the top of this mountain and I can disseminate them to the people, quote unquote. And it's like I can give this out because this is what's going to ultimately liberate, which is what I really want to do with my Uranus aspect. I want to liberate others, especially creative souls, especially creative talents, everything Leo West in this, right? And it's like the key things that I find with this is when you're not at this in Pluto, Pluto being Aquarius, we got a glimpse in Saturn. Pluto, I think, is going to be way more, I mean, whatever happens, it's going to be way more permanent, right? I think Pluto and Aquarius, Saturn and Aquarius kind of got us prepared for Ooh. certain, mm -hmm. you know, limitations that, but Pluto was like, look, now I got you in a chokehold. <laughs> and I actually don't care about your feelings. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like so, hey, no. while we're going retrograde, let's go back to Capricorn, mm. right? Because that's what the retrograde is going, right? It's going to go back to Capricorn. Let's go back to Capricorn. And let's see how this title has held you back. Ah. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, let's see how this title has eventually held you back. Because first off, we, we're done with that. But I need to remind you one last time so that you know going forward how will you use this success? How will you use this status and these accolades and this money and this these resources that you've gained? Even if it's this right now, StreamYard having this is a resource, right? Being able mm -hmm. to combine guests. It's like, well, how can you invite people? How can you use this resource and support others, people who have like minds, people who, you know, are 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 no longer in a popularity race of the Leo side of this, but they're just looking to honor each other, right? Within the network that matters to you. And again, I'm just using astrology in because we're both, we both work in astrology, right? We sure. both love the stars. We both speak the language. And so it makes the most sense with this particular channel as well. It's like, it's like, how can astrologers across the board unite? And how can we do it without 
in, in a prideful way, but in a way where the pride does not uh, become a competition. It doesn't become something where it's like, I need to do this and show you up, or you need to do this and show me up. And it's like, how can we have conflicting ideas, conflicting thoughts, and conflicting personalities that in, at the end of the day, because of generosity, because of a warm heart, we can embrace those levels of discourse and laugh in the moment and realize that, you know what, this is not a battle between you and I. At the end of the day, we're both these drunken wizards on stage walking people through what seems to be reality at this time frame of life. And I feel like this is what Pluto Aquarius will do, but it will have a lot of power struggle in the meanwhile. We're going to have a lot of tough lessons and we're going to have to give something because Pluto is about exchange, right? It's about finding the wealth beneath the surface. So it's like, what's the wealth beneath the surface? If we're not exchanging money, what are we exchanging? It's more of a social currency that is involved with the heart. Mm. And I think this is one of the major themes that we got. Venus and Leo is going to retrograde for like months. I don't know how long. I, I, I don't know about months, but it's going to be a while. And I do have an interesting point about that. But we kind of, you kind of really bring up like about like 10,000 different holistic topics that we could have like gone into in your last little. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, the one that we started on was talking about like going back from Pluto back into Capricorn, which is going to be like a whole other thing because in terms of like a global standpoint, obviously that's going to like bring back America's Pluto return. And, you know, the whole YouTube's going to be going crazy about de-dollarization all over again. But then why yeah. is it making you look at that? And why is it making you feel uncomfortable? And then why is no one planning about that? And it's like the whole, you know, like uh, the whole pandemic thing again, where it's just like everybody bought toilet paper instead of vitamins. So it's a whole other thing. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So it's just like, it's just like a whole other thing like that. And then it's just like, well, when you bring up that, then you want to bring up the point of why are we retrograding and experiencing these exact same degrees over the past four years over and over and over again. And it really is just to the point of you, you know, saying basically like, the universe is like, we're about to enter this upshift. Here's a thousand things that you need to grow up with really, really quickly. It ain't going to be good. It ain't going to be bad. You'll be good after the fact, and it'll be painful along the way, potentially. But, you know, you you, you got to do it because we're upshifting here. And if you don't want to live in the 13th dimension, which is a fake version of the fourth dimension that they're trying to force on you, this is what you got to do. Because it really goes into, like, a whole other thing about, like, yes, Pluto and Aquarius is going to bring, like, AI out, which will probably push forward blockchain technology with, for the same sure. reason that like people with true internal gifts are going to be popular because they need to, a, a way that they can actually verify the exact aspect of, you know, like say like, you know, I'm really going on. I'm really thinking like 10 thoughts at once. I got to focus. Um, sorry, I'm having a Gemini moment, but, um, Go ahead, spit yeah. it out. Is, yeah. is, are we no, moon in Gemini today? What? We moan in Gemini, man. Spit them out. I know, I know. I'm trying, I'm trying. It's just like, uh, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to talk and think 10 thoughts at once. But um, whatchamacallit. So yeah, so then it'll be like, yes, we have to tokenize movies now because that's how we can isolate the actual creator and the creative and that individual moment before we can just tell chat GPT version 40 to create that entire movie all over again and claim ownership, you know, because falsifying like what all this and putting out all this information is going to like flood the market in a sense. Uh -huh. So it's basically like, it's just basically like, this is what's going to like really, really bring spirituality and all that stuff to the forefront of why everybody needs to go within themselves, heal themselves and focus on all that energy. Because basically this is where you will have finally be able to like be that gold in the sea of hay that is mm -hmm. going to be all this information that's out there. Mm -hmm. And yes, this information is good to a, uh, like a certain extent, but why we're pushing all the spirituality and pushing all this stuff so far is to teach you to truly detach from all that externalization like we were talking about, align with yourself and really don't like, you know, choke yourself from focusing on too much information and trying to look externally instead of focusing on your internal intention and seeing what aligns with you for the time being, because it doesn't matter. There's a thousand YouTube channels of how to get rich now, and they're all saying along the lines of align with God, and nobody's really blurring the lines and looking the point of like, hey. They, they went within and aligned with what they're truly good at. You could pick anyone you want, no matter how popular they are. And as long as you align yourself with that true intention, you will move forward. And I think mm. this is my, my tangent, which is on like the Pluto, like retrograde and cusp of where it's like, 
look at your past status, blah, 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 and then move forward because we're going to start like really putting the pressure on these fixated thoughts that you align with during the Saturn and Aquarius time. And that's just the tidbit on that in terms of like that individual retrograde. We have all these other retrogrades. And then, you know, once we go through this Martian period, Venus is going to align you again, probably with your ex that's like, oh my God, you were always the one to be with me. Da, 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 da. And then you have the decision to either break that person's heart again or relearn something, or just, you know, like, uh, like option three, which is probably what I'm going to do, but we're not going to speak on that. And then, you know, what you call it, like, it, it's, oh, man, what's option three? Oh, uh, just have fun with them. And remember that it's not permanent. Yo, so, you know, I've been feeling, I've been, I gotta learn. I've been feeling that, that comeback energy on, mm. oh, man, I fumbled you. I swear to God. And it's mm. just this, it's just this silent voice, I, you know. It's not even really here. Like no one has said this to me verbally. You just said it out loud because yeah. Gemini's can do that. They can mirror somebody's thoughts and shoot them out loud on impulse. But it's really? like you. I swear, it's been just tingling in the background. So that's one major thing that's going to happen. Um, there's mad things you said that I, I feel very excited about, and it's like well, it's going to be almost, cool. Yeah. I almost got to like pause and think for a moment. Like, okay, what am I really responding to? What are you responding? Oh, you got Paul. My bad. Okay, so this is the major one. I don't know where it linked to what you said, but I'll figure that out. When we look at the retrograde, we're going back from a career level to Capricorn, right? And we're talking um, into Aquarius. There was a point where I remember telling you we were going to do a live, and then I was right. like, "Yo, I gotta take, a, I gotta pause." And I was like, "I don't know why." And then when I took the time to reflect, I realized, "Wow," I was like, "All right, I need to make considerations about what frequencies do I want to align with." Now, mm -hmm. I'm saying that, and I'm going to keep this next part broad. I knew some of the collaborations you did, right? And I was like, okay, do I want to fuse my audience with this particular audience? And right. I'm going to leave that open because you know where we're at with this, right? Right. And I was like, okay, do I want to do that? And I was like, no. Okay, so now there's Gate 56. Now, look, we're here now. Retrograde brought us back. We're yeah. here now. So Gate 56, one of the things it says is... Um, on route to this drunken state of godliness to laugh at everything, right? There's this in-between stage where low frequencies only excite you mm. because you realize that this is fuel to the pot. It's like, you know, there there's this point where when I look at this retrograde, how it's hitting me, I've watched certain moments where I have made connections with people in low frequency and it like completely turned my direction in ways where I was like, I don't want to do that again. Mm -hmm. And so this was how it kind of came back and hit me. But then this retrograde was also kind of showing this evolution of, hey, but by the way, you know, you kind of mixed up your timelines and that's who you were like years ago. That's not how you handle low frequency today. Mm. Now. In this in this stage, and so it was kind of like a, a memory. If you think like the nostalgia from Cancer working into Pluto and Capricorn, it's kind of like a memory that was out of timelines, right? And so right. my point being, this fifty six gate Mars and Leo right now, which will also be Venus and Leo, it speaks about like, look, you can now um, tap in and tune in with a low frequency and realize that at the end of the day, it's a frequency. Mm. It's just a frequency, and this is kind of like the opposition is bringing out this understanding of look. There's no such thing as a good moral and a bad moral. You don't need someone to tell you what's good and what's bad. And it's us walking and getting beyond this of like, well, if there's no laws about, you know, killing a man is good or bad, well, would I kill somebody? And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, probably and that's an, that's an extreme example, but it's like, probably not. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I thought, and I'm going to use this example with mass shootings in the U.S., for example, right? It's mm -hmm. like, if... um you know, craving attention and I'm not getting it, would I really shoot up a school or am I just doing it because I know that at the end of the day, I'm going to die famous. And this is kind of some of this Jeffrey Dahmer talk and all those other, you know, notorious killers and stuff where it's like people start doing these mass acts of immoral themes, but why? And it's like, because of some of the attention coming back. So that's an awkward little side of tangent. My point to the real point of this is this Leo energy has the ability to transmute the dark. And you think about the sun and it's like, what's surrounded by the sun? Space, the void, 
mm-hmm. blackness. Yeah, you got these stars here and there, blah, 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 blah. You got other planets, you got moons, and sh- but at the end of the day, most of space is just this black void of nothing. And Leo is, is the sun, it's just this one very obvious indicator of light. Mm-hmm. And I start realizing Leo doesn't really transmute light. Leo transmutes the dark energy all around it. And same thing with Scorpio. Scorpio doesn't transmute to darkness. It transmutes that little speck of light that is trying to dig deep to get to, aka the purity of its soul. And mm. so when I started understanding the two switch of this, like if I if I didn't think, and I would just think, okay, Leo transmutes the light. That would if I did not think. But it's like even Neo, Leo in his exaltation of Neptune. What's what's Pisces? What's Neptune? It's the vo- It's this portal of like. God knows we don't know what the substance is, right? Like at the end of the day, it's always changing from a solid water to, you know, a liquid water. And it's like, well, what is a liquid water? And it's like, oh, what is a solid liquid? And it's like, oh, now it's a gas. And it's like, it's just continuously transforming. But at the end of the day, it's infinite. So my point of saying this is like, when I look at this Pluto retrograde, a lot of what I feel like the opposition is bringing is like us no longer looking at bad energy and being like, oh no, I can't do that, that's bad energy. Now it's like, you know what? Well, if I came on the world stage to be a leader and to walk people through this spiritual warfare, well, why would I walk away from somebody who obviously needs assistance, who obviously needs support, who I know very clearly, like if I put my foot forward, I can help to transmute energy. Energy, not good, not bad, energy Mm. towards where we're going. And it's like, this is one of the things I think the opposition is bringing out. It's going to really show who's in it, you know, for the long haul, as well as um, for real support and who's in it for attention, for clout, fame, and who's doing it just because they're doing it because their heart says, this is what you should do. This is what we want to do. We have the, we have, we've gone through our own internal work and, you know, align with our heart power where now you know, a solid heart, a pure heart can transmute any frequency. It doesn't matter. It's, no, it's beyond good and bad. It's beyond this moral sense of blah, blah, blah. And I find this is one of the things that's happened in major. Yeah. So the uh, first thing is uh, in the beginning, you asked, you don't know what sparked this. And I think that was my uh, uh, my random like third option Leo retrograde comment that sparked this. But the other mm-hmm. thing that I think is interesting is that like, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, what should we call it? The other thing that I think that's interesting is like while we're all going through this, I feel like it's really important to note that like we're experiencing this through like the first like global sense of culture. Like this is our first time like in recent history at least that we're experiencing a global culture. Like everybody's kind of going through all this at the same time, you know. Mm. And, like I find that interesting to take note of, especially when going through that, because it's like what does Cause like, well, and then this is kind of touching back on like the Pluto retrograde of where it's just like, it's going back to removing a sense of uh, like, you know, the global currency that kind of underpinned everything, but mm-hmm. Pluto is power and control as well as transformation. So what mm-hmm. are we transmuting that like whole global, like that global wave of energy into, which is what you said of like, well, I mean, you know, your whole vibe kind of like creating an economy of harmony, you know? So what sure. is the new energy exchange that we're going to be going through? in terms of that like global understanding and you know everybody's like worried about like bricks and like de-dollarization and stuff like that but like i don't know i think it's going to be something that we've never seen before so it's, it's going to be something we've never seen it's going to be yeah. something bricks be de-dollarization cool. this is a step mm-hmm. this is this is a phase right mm-hmm. like this is a step it's a phase and i feel like it was important to announce like what people can do because no matter what fear is a very low energy and it's yeah. like it can be used positively because at the end of the day human beings from a genetic level fear and anger are like two of our main drives like we're driven by fear am i going to be able to pay my rent am i going to get my dog washed am i going to blah 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 blah. there's all this fear and anxiety and it really makes us sick Mm -hmm. right it really makes us so so sick as such a it's just low but so we gotta i feel like we have to respect that fear people do go through the fear of well i live in a state and my dollar is going to be worth nothing. And, you know, I feel like it's something that's important to respect because I've been to Colombia, for example, mm. and I watched the bordering country, Venezuela, 
lose their dollar to the point where they're giving away thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and it's worth zilch. That is a real fear. Like it can genuinely happen and it has in many economies. Now at the same time, the US is not no punk. And this is one of the big major things. Like the US is not gonna roll over in the same way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they're not, this is, so what you said is really still on point of like, at the end of the day, like, it does suck. I won't lie. My dollar is worth way less. I, I gave the example the other day, like, the last time I took money out the bank, I got 130 US dollars less for taking the same amount out. Damn. That sucks. That sucks. And I'm in Mexico. That sucks. That's not, it is not. I don't enjoy that. You know, I could use $130 on anything. You know what <laughs> I mean? Any, any, anything. Like, like, too many things. I mean, crap, this platform that I'm using costs $250. That would have been at least half the platform, right? So it's like, and that's just to take the money out. That's not to, I'm not getting anything and taking out my money. So that does suck. But what you said is long doing is stifle. You know what I'm saying? Like it's pinned down forever. It's trying to get us to transform one of the differences in the world which is money. At the end of the day, if money no longer existed, the entire world would be unrecognizable. For sure. No one would no, yeah, be unrecognizable. That, that, that's where we get into like magic squares and how people, certain certain groups structured societies. That's a whole other thing. But um, well, yeah. And then that really like, that really kind of like underpins like the value of Saturn in a way. And I think like, you know, like Pluto and Aquarius in some weird way will be showing us the true value in like what Saturn has to offer us and what that masculine energy from Saturn like shows us, like it gives mm -hmm. you stubborn certainty. Like, so what you said, like with in a world without like money and us, like not understanding how we really like transact and really like exchange energy in a physical form. It's like, what would that look like? And then Saturn, mm -hmm. Saturn doesn't care. Saturn can just sit back and laugh and be like, <laughs> you figured that one out, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's thing. It's like, in some weird ways, it's like, the the pluto and aquarius transit is really going to show us a lot of value and i think like we're going to see a new like like specifically when pluto goes direct and like in 2024 once it finally crosses into that second degree of aquarius i think we're really going to see a strong push forward into like people really valuing and paying attention to spiritual ideals because at that specific degree we're going to be moving pluto into the aquila constellation which is going to be specifically angling this star known as altair now for mm -hmm. everybody that played assassin's creed you know all about Altair, same vibe as the star. But basically, for those who don't know, what that does is it's like spiritual warfare, spiritual mm -hmm. strength, spiritual ideas. And it's all that Aquarius energy, but specifically directed for spirituality, which, you know, if you want to look at the broad astrological version of it, obviously it's the cusp of, you know, of Capricorn and, and um, you know, Capricorn and Aquarius. So it's all about like what people gain strength from in terms of their ideologies and what how they rejoin people and all that stuff being that if you want to go back in history and really look at how you know the vatican and whatever religion across the world you want to pick ruled over society and had power over society for so long so it's like you can really talk about that and say it's the aquarius pisces cusp all you want but really at the end of the day saturn was giving its energy through religion for the most part of like society in the past 2000, 3000, 4000 years, however far you want to go back. I know, I know it doesn't exactly go past 5000 through the whole other reasons of maybe potential floods or whatever reasons, but people were out here trying and it was going through religion. So it's really going to be interesting where that power shifts forward in the next time, because in our recent history, that was through money. Will it shift back to spirituality? Will it shift back to religion? Not exactly. But it will look similar to that. So it's important to pay attention to the energy of what that brought and how to position yourself accordingly if power is your goal. Because if we're really getting into like nothing's good, nothing's bad, it's just energy transmutation, you really mm -hmm. got to figure out where you, what your intentions are and where you want to position yourself for that flow to direct it as you wish. Because that's what Aquarius does at the end of the day. What does this mean right here? Mercury uh, conjuncting out here. Um, I mean, if, uh, if, that man be speaking about spirituality and really be making things happen. He's going to have some strength behind it. Like it is what it is. Like you're here for a reason. That might be the reason. This is why you're thinking along these lines of, I wouldn't exactly say spiritual warfare just yet, although we could get into that at a later date, but you know, you're here fighting for these fighting for people's minds. And you're probably um, not, you're probably, uh, I don't want to say like the equivalent of um, 
that like old vegan lady on TikTok when it comes to your mentality towards spirituality, but you're not really going to let people go without thinking about it. Mm. So, you know, um, I was checking real quick, where, where does Pluto go after from a, you, you had it from the star standpoint yeah. and what you said is lined right back up with human design jinkies. It, it mm. hits gate 41 where, um, the shadow frequency of this is, is actually considered fantasy, which is funny because I think I put that on there, but whatever. And mm -hmm. it's like the fantasy of like, okay, I got this dream, right? I got this dream. Yeah. I, got these, I got these futuristic 11th house Aquarian goals. I got these hopes, right, mm -hmm. of what I want community to look like, of what I want my, my own dreams and what my own contribution to look like, okay? But it's like, well, do you meet that with any form of action, right? And that's mm -hmm. going to be after it hits the two degrees. And where you kind of work in the, the, the frequency that uh, push you, brings you forward and is, is actually considered anticipation. Mm. And it speaks about how anticipation is very much misinterpreted. But a lot of it is like being able to use what you just said about the Pope and 5,000 years ago, being able to look at the past, basically. Mm -hmm. Right? Saturnian influence again. Being able to look at the past and realize, well, what's the loop? What's the cycle? How has the snake continuously bitten its tail, Arboros, mm. right? And, it's, and, and this is kind of where you start working into the, uh, this, um, this higher frequency, which would be like emanation. And it's like, okay, look, you know, well, this death rebirth, this Arboros, it will continue to bite its own tail. The head always bites the tail eventually. So if you just, it's kind of being able to realize that now when I look at the Pluto in this next stage after two degrees, which is like <laughs> after February 2024, I think. We're yeah. all going to start to have to come to terms with where do we just stay in fantasy? And we're like, yo, we want these things to happen, but like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? It'd be mm -hmm. something like me saying, I want to create a tribe, but did I create a membership? I actually have this next gate of 41. I have actually the 60 where we're at now in Pluto, and I have the 41, both my Aquarius. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's really interesting because I've seen it in my real life, and it's like, I spent a lot of time thinking, let's say for tribe community, before I had a membership, I was like, man, like, I really wish that, and I externalized this. I didn't see it internally. I externalized. I really wish that I had a tribe. Like, you know, I'd be having weird ass thoughts. Like, I'd be really not knowing, like, I'd be really wishing that somebody can have these discussions and conversations with me, but everywhere I go, I can't really have them. And that was the fantasy stage for mm -hmm. me, where it's like, well, what was I doing to do to make any of that come true? Like, what ideas were I flirting with and actually, you know, taking action on? Mm -hmm. And this is what I feel like happens after when it hits past two degrees for like five, six degrees or so. And then it hits this point where like, okay, cool. Now you can start to anticipate what that success looks like. You can start to anticipate, you know, what comes next. And you can, you'll start to have premonitions. I really feel like by February 2024 and beyond, that year, 2024, we're going to start having very clear psychic premonitions that are going to come through, and they're going to be, like, so undeniable. You're not going to be able to be like, oh, no, this is not the way. And it's kind of already happening now. The synchronicities are already happening now. But at yeah. this point, it's going to be the point where you're going to start to embrace that, you know what, it's okay to be misinterpreted. And this is where I feel like the real power begins to happen, because once any of us any of us in the chat, any of us listening, once we stop caring about being our ideas or our hopes and our dreams being misrepresented or interpreted in a way that we didn't mean, well, guess what? It allows us to get the fuck out of the fantasy and start working on it because I know what it means. The people that I associate knows what it means. So I'm no longer trying to fight with, and I, I was going to say Joe Schmo. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm no longer trying to fight with the person who don't speak my language who don't mm -hmm. resonate with me, who, who wants to continuously interpret it because they don't want to step out of their little shell. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like It's convenient for people to just stay in the fantasy base and realize like, okay, look, I'm just going to allow this to continue to distract me because now I don't need to do anything and I get to blame people. And mm -hmm. I feel like this is one of the big things going to happen where that power struggle of you know, um, just not doing a deeper psychological look not taking a deeper psychological look at the premonitions you've always had, at the, the way that life always does this wheel and circle until we eventually completely transcend the circle and realize, 
I don't even need to bite the tail anymore. These are just concepts for the human mind to understand existence and, 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 and polarities and blah, blah, blah. But once you really align with your spirit, there's no more discussion. You allow yourself to just be misunderstood. And you start realizing they'll catch up or they won't. <laughs> the or they won't always kills me. It's like, or they won't. And it's like, look, there's no time for that. Like, it, mm. I, I feel like it's going to get to that point because Scorpio has a, a lot of, to do with time and, 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 and including Pluto in this instance. And it's like, you know, when I say time, it's like we all start yeah, to get really to the point where like, I'm curious about that. So the death card, for example, it has to do with mm. time and like involuntary change. Keyword involuntary, which mm. is like, look, like, know you know, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like when transformations occur, the time, the pressure from Pluto, it equates to something like I'm coming to terms with my morality, a.k.a. I'm going to die. Mm. And once you start really getting and coming to terms with the fact that I'm going to die, there's a different kind of pressure that forces you to want to transform because you're like, I'm running out of time. Because now I have all these ideas. I've had all these fantasies. I've had all these dreams, but they're not coming true. And then death is a great motivator. It's a tremendous motivator. If I'm, I'm a Scorpio rising, for example, and I have my mind's at 23 degrees, aka Aquarius, right? And it's like, when I looked at my hopes and dreams, it was about 16 years old. I remember feeling like I was going to die all the time. I felt like I honestly had a little Grim Reaper on my shoulder. But most Damn. of it was because I was ignoring that I was a shaman. That's one major, major theme behind it. And I still ignored it until like 20, 26 years old. So that's like oh, wow. 10 more years that I pressed ignore, right? But then the day it was like time. As I got older, I started realizing, yo, Pernod, you have this comic purpose. You have this cosmic purpose that you have to fulfill. Like you didn't incarnate just to dick around. Like you have things to do. You have people to lead. You have, you know, moments to guide. And eventually it was like that pressure, death, the realization of I'm going to die before I travel the world got me to get on a plane to Asia. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like at a certain point, like I was just dreaming and hoping that I was just going to get to Asia. And I was hoping that people that I was working for were going to, you know, set up shop because they could, because they had the money to do it, that they were going to set shops up in California for me. They were going to set shops up. And then from California, I was going to get from California. It was this fantasy in my head. In California, I'm just gonna, they're going to then open one up in Asia, or they're going to open up one up in Europe, or somewhere international. Because my dream, 11th house, was to go abroad, to, to be abroad, to get on a plane and experience culture. That was a dream for me at a point. But that was never going to come true, just because I wished it. And this is one of the major things I feel like by time Pluto hits after February 2024, we're going to come to terms with that. And we're going to realize that, look, we're going to die. And it was that same feeling that I'm going to die before I left my own home state, being Connecticut. That, that fear mm -hmm. within itself got me to transform. It got me to say, you know what, I need to get stuff together. And so this is way before quarantine 2020. This is like 2016 at the time frame. And oh, it's like. Man. Oh. Yeah, this is like 2016 at the time frame. I'm like, look, Pernell, you need to go set up a business because you can't expect to go live abroad and not have some sense of income. At my mind, at the time, it was just that simple. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Eventually, I just began coaching people and blah, 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 blah. And that set me up to give me the confidence to say, look, I've done something that is valuable. Mm -hmm. And this pressure that I'm going to die. And when I say this, I'm using the word die because it's actually real. Like, I think in 2016, it was my sister's birthday. It was August 31st in 2016. I lost my job, which was the security at the time frame, my, on my sister's birthday. And I watched a man die that same night by a gunshot. What the fuck? He died an arm's length from me. Not only that, but arm's length from me was my roommate. And my roommate sat here, I sat here, and the guy in the middle of the two of us died by a drive-by shooting. Oh. That was the reality. Damn. That this guy, and I just had this mindset of like, yo, this guy's aim is not so good that he's driving in a car and he just hit exactly who he was trying to hit. And that he just didn't hit me or my roommate just because he, his aim was so good. Like, part of my mind was like, no. And I was like, I could have been the one. 
And it mm-hmm. was just that pressure of death. Like death had to literally show up at the front door. The death of my job, the death of an actual person that I held as he died, that I don't even know, right? It's like death is a beautiful transformation and motivator. It is something that will get us to move. And so again, my point being, usually that morality, that fact that life, you're going to die before you achieve your goals, it will start to push you. This is the midlife crisis of Scorpio. This is 35 to 45 years of age. People are like, okay, my God, I, I've had kids. I got the job. I did this. I did this. And I did a whole bunch of compromising. And what I did not do is follow what was pure to me. And I feel like this is what, when you add Pluto's element and his relationship to Scorpio, but you put it in the hopes and dream center of Aquarius, this is what it's coming down to. It's going to bring near life death experiences and it doesn't have to be a physical body dying it could be again the death of a job that you thought you were always going to have the death of a marriage that you thought you were always going to have something you probably thought you always were going to have and was secure be snatched away from us and that will motivate our dreams because we're going to come Dang it, he's always freezing on when he's doing something good. Stop freezing. Stop freezing. He's going on a good tangent. Man, anyways, when I come back, I looked at the star of his ascendant at 23 degrees of Scorpio, and it's the knee of the Sagittarius constellation. So no wonder he found his status when he finally traveled. I don't want to talk to him about that, but he was going on a good tangent. Damn. Of course, this comes on a tangent. Can you guys still see me? Yeah, I think you can. No, work internet. I want him to come back. He was going on a tangent. I was getting enthralled in the story. Let me ask him if he's still on. Oh, he's back. There he is. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think we just ripped it. Yeah, I'm here. You can hear me clearly? I was just talking about your story, Steve. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Cool. What's up, Vanessa? How you doing? What's up, uh, Uraeus? It's good to see y'all all in here. Thank y'all for hitting the thumbs up. Um, I, I, maybe I hit the, the point and, and, and everybody heard what they needed to hear. <laughs> I know, but I like hearing it. It was cool. You were flowing. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, if I tried to wrap that whole thing up into one sentence, I would say this. If there's anything I learned from that, it's that I ignored my destiny long enough that I had to see somebody die to move. Man. That's the simplicity. That's the simplicity. And that was around, like I said, 25, 26 years old, something, something like that. That was the simplicity. That's crazy. And if I had anybody, anything to give because of that, from that experience, it's don't wait that long. It's not necessary. <laughs> like, like in one way, I am a Scorpio rising. Like these are the things that get me myself to transform. Like just the Arboros, you know, death situations. But at the end of the day, there's what the, I feel the experience was for was to give to other people to realize you don't need to wait for something so cataclysmic to happen in order for you to start activating your dreams, to take it from a place of fantasy and then bring it into reality. And I start realizing like real leadership is to actually be able to live in a delusion and then make that delusion real. Like to be able to allow yourself to dream and take that dream from something that's just a dream, just a delusion and turn it into a real concept. It's possible. And I feel like, you know, like I said, Pluto and Aquarius is going to to the, all the people, Aquarius, is going to bring some form of death of something you care about, something you care about to urge you to start pursuing that dream because that dream, that hope, it's more than something that's necessary to become a reality. It's literally for the collective upliftment of consciousness so we can all get back to a state of pure consciousness. I mean, I think that's pretty interesting, but something you talked about before, like way, way, way before the whole like deep scorpionicness, 
was um you were just talking about like getting the group together right and i feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of interesting especially with the like opposition that we're literally talking about because in some weird way you needed to let go of your vision go through all this to find that group not necessarily mm -hmm. play like power but to help them transform and really grow you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying I just found that interesting how it's just like time and time and time and time again. We should probably even like, uh, you know, one of these days, somebody may even look through all the actual timestamps and for the little tropes that we just discussed that actually were a direct reflection of the opposition we experienced. Mm. Oh, and then, I don't know if you heard while well, uh, you had a little connection issue, but uh, when you said the degree of your ascendant, I actually, uh, I looked up what star that actually angles and it ended up being the knee of the Sagittarius constellation. So I found it interesting that like, through the pursuit of travel, you found your status, you know, because the knees are correlated to the 10th house and all that stuff. Uh, I, I fully, I, I fully resonate with that. I mean, I left, like I said, it's been about five, six years. I'm losing track with one of the two that I've been out of the States. And it's a good place to be. Yo, I really like, I, I'm really going to look that up a little bit more than the, the knee of Sagittarius because it's like, when I think about it, it's the, it's yeah, it's the, called it's the, Agena. Agena? Yeah. Like I'm gonna type it. Like I this. can just send you the link. Sweet. Um, you know, when I look at it, when you talk the fact that we're talking about Sagittarius, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's the people that I met that didn't speak much, who were like these like mystical beings. I swear to God, like, you know, there's one woman I'm thinking about, she did sound therapy and mm -hmm. she literally she lived in my apartment complex. She would eat with no seasoning. Like she never, she was like, I don't do salt. I don't do pepper. I don't do nothing. She just, she would cook a slab of fish and it would just be the fish. Like she ate very simple. And it was like, she was a strange woman in a lot of ways, but in other ways, like I can kind of feel her. And I was like, there's something about her that's just hella mystical. And mm -hmm. she did like these sound healings and stuff like this. And people will be purging and throwing up and vomiting from sound healings. Like it was like, and you know, it was these kind of experiences though while traveling that started reminding me of my of whatever the shaman is within me and i met a whole bunch of women like her in so many different so many different countries she was hardcore for sure i i remember looking at her like yo lady like nah and the craziest thing is nowadays i find my body is the same mm. I, I find my this is the funny thing it took years but now my body is starting to turn the same way and i can't stop thinking about her because now my body is rejecting a lot of stuff like it's not allow it's not allowing me certain spices anymore my, my stomach is not able to handle tomato sauce even if it's real tomato sauce it's just becoming too acidic it's like it's getting weird like my body is responding in very very weird ways i think it's a lot of this uranus and taurus stuff the way mm. it's hitting me it's just like it's changing what my body needs for from a food standpoint all well, I mean, it's sixth house, you know boom that's 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 your intestines right there that's it, it's yeah going Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's getting me. I'm getting yeah, that. I literally, um, one thing that's interesting about that is like, I always love people like that. Cause it's like, uh, I like to equate them to like a hole in the wall restaurant of like, mm -hmm. you're like, the decor is shit. And like, it equates to that person's fucking weird, but that doesn't mean I don't like them or they're not valuable in any way. Sure. They're just like, you know, they're just not compromising themselves and their mystical abilities to be, to act regular. You know what I'm saying? And, and that, that's like, what it you know, is. Yeah. And like, I don't know, I think there's like, there's like something to be said for like, no matter which side you pick, but like, I mean, obviously there's always some value to like adapt and correlate for the purposes of just like, you know, sharing your vision, you know, but like, um, I don't know. I just like, that's like such a weird dynamic to walk in terms of it. And I think that's really going to come out in Pluto Aquarius where it's just like, you're either going to find a lot of power in your individuality amongst who you associate with, or you're going to find the opposite. And that's like, I don't know. I think that really like ties it back into like what we all started this about where it's just like um where i guess you kind of started it in the space of like the the venus the not venus and leo mars and leo side of things is going to be like why can't you let just be me mom i want to be me and you know it's like that type of thing versus this like the more sage person that kind of just like accepts that they don't need power to attain what they want you know right it's just like i don't know i find that dynamic just interesting it's always so interesting no no you know you, you said it and it what it brought me back to was those days i talked about of like fighting and I started realizing, like, there's two things I realized. I was like, Pernell, one day you're going to fight somebody that you can't beat. That, 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 that no. <laughs> <laughs> you quit while you were ahead that time. I, I quit while I was ahead. No, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. 
But I always laugh because there's this one instance in high school. Um, my coach, I played lacrosse, and my coach, we were in automotive class, the last period before we all go home. And my coach is in the room, and there was this guy named Donald Wilkerson. He's the right. only one. It took me so long. I still feel like part of me never got over it. <laughs> he was sleeping behind me on his desk. He was like, sleep like this. And mm-hmm. I was being a Gemini jokester, and I like slammed the book to like wake him up. And he woke up and he punched me in my nose. <laughs> man, I was fire. I was fire mad. And I was like, it's over. And at the moment, my coach, he literally looked at me. And we were like going to state finals. And again, this is the Leo years, right? Like this is the 14 to 20. These are Leo years of popularity, sports, yada, yada. And he was like, he looked at me. He was like, sit down. And I respected him. Like mm-hmm. when I look at Leo, fifth house, these also speak about our heroes, our role models. And like, I didn't respect a lot of people, quite frankly, especially. Oh, I understand that. that. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I didn't respect a lot well, of people. You're Scorpio ascendant, like you're just constantly unimpressed. Yeah. Like I, like he was one of the impressive male figures in my life. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he was just, he had my respect, like almost like a father figure. And mm-hmm. he told me, he was like, he was like, we're going, we, he's like, we got stuff to do. And he said the S word because that's who he was. He's like, we got stuff to do. He's like, you handle your business outside of school. That's what he said. <laughs> in front of the, and this is in front of the other teacher, the actual teacher of the class. He's saying this in front, he's like, you handle your stuff outside of school. And so the teacher tells this kid, Donald, he said, hey, you, you leave now. It was like five minutes before the bell. And they're like, Pernell, you stay. Because they just saw it. I was fuming. Mm-hmm. And so now my mindset shifted. And I was like, when that bell rings, I'm hunting this mother. And it's just what it was, who I was. So point being, he was the one that got me. If there was anybody, it, it was this situation. And I never found him for like three, four days. He, he literally, I couldn't find him. That's good. And point being, it was these kind of experiences. I know it was great. I'm, I'm happy when I look at this as an adult. It's these experiences that it was this and a couple other experiences. Like I said, the other time when I was like, look, Pernod, you got to stop. Because one day somebody's, somebody's going to get you. Like it, it, it was this reality coming in. And I realized like, you know, power isn't in your ability to whoop somebody's ass. And if I'm being honest, I didn't always believe that. And there was some part of me that was hiding insecurities in the midst of that. And I had to kind of come to terms with that. Like, what insecurities are, am I hiding? Now, when I look at this full circle, it kind of has this understanding of, like, power is the ability to take this how you want. Power is, in this instance, in this particular example, is being able to take on the world and literally burn it down. Kind of like you were saying earlier with your Aries fifth house. I mm-hmm. have gone through that and I've felt that very intensely. But being able to do it and choosing not to. And that was the power part that I learned to overall kind of align with. It's like being able to have that strength or that power and actually choosing to stand down. Choosing a different path. Like not needing to exert myself in this manner, but instead to shift that strength, shift that power, and put it into, at least today, a creative expression, a creative project, to put it into, you know, building a tribe or a community. Things that take a tremendous amount of force to get up off the ground. Yeah. And that ultimately, when I realized, is it was like the shifting of power. It's like, look, that was my distraction. You know, like going head first, going fist first, talk later. Mm. That was my distraction. And it was my way of avoiding the deeper parts of my destiny. Mm. You know, the deeper parts of my purpose. Because it's like, as long as I'm doing that, I'm actually sabotaging myself. I'm not getting anywhere. And so I don't know where the hell that came from or what part of the tangent, but I found something, something was said and it brought me to that. And it's like, I feel like all of us are going to go through these, these shifts and understanding of what power is and what power means. And when we do get there, how do we use it? And I think one of the major powers with Aquarius is going to be social currency. Mm-hmm. Right? Like not, 
not in the Libra or the Capricornia sense of like, you know, who you know um, and how you use who and what you know, but mm -hmm. more in a sense of like, if I look at this from the standpoint of I'm already letting go and not being owned by the status achieved, how can I just give from the heart and truly look for nothing in return? Like, to, to go beyond the Libra format of Saturn and not look for win-win situations, mm -hmm. but to realize, like, I'm okay with myself. I'm happy with what I've done in my life. I can just let somebody else win. Period. Just because it feels good in my heart. Well, I, I don't mean, I need I, something in return, huh? I mean, I think this is, like, kind of going into, like, uh, really, really breaking down, like, the spiritual essence of what power is. You know what I'm saying? So it's, like, are you looking for a return? What's, like, it's, like, there's no, like, just th this overlay of Aquarius energy from Pluto is really going to remove the concept in, like, a general sense and a cultural understanding of what is good and what is bad. And then flipping it to a sense of what is the most efficient way to direct your energy in a way that gets you to consciously experience what you want, right? That's like the true essence of power that I think we're kind of getting at here, being able to consciously experience what you want, despite the level of leverage it may take, despite the level of efficiency it may take, despite the level of action it may take you, really, really isolating what you want and focusing all of your energy, attention, and frequency on nothing but that. And if that manifests as what you stated for you, that's what it is for you. And if it manifests to itself, as a form of, you know, utilizing and manifesting and creating your own form of currency that takes over all other currencies and you just magically own the world currency and then you're the rich, you can mance and moose on everybody, like, then that's what it is for you. You know what I'm saying? But the whole point is really identifying your intention and being able to recognize, does this align with me? Is this what I want? Can I consciously experience this? And if so, how am I going about it? And I think like, you know, it's really going to reshape a lot of things in this world it's really going to reshape like how people live it's going to reshape everything but it's all starting from within which is what everybody always talked about and i think it's just going to be like the first like real instance of like okay we're going to see it you know people are flying their modular home on a hoverboard that's just how it's going to be yeah you you said something that made me think when you said remove mm -hmm. and that was the key word um i really felt i, I had to type it to not forget it'll remove the mind as the lead you know yeah. And, and it'll bring us closer to our heart space because when we look at it, right, like we know Leo is the heart frequency. And we don't think of it as much as a mental sign. We think of Aquarius as a mental sign who, in certain efforts, certain efforts, they lack heart. Not oh, at all. Yeah, bring up that topic. One right? Second. Like they lack, they lack, they are, and when I say lack heart, I'm saying like they're like choosing only the mental process. And you know, forgetting about their shadow aspect of Leo being the heart of like, okay, well, this makes sense on paper, this concept, this idea makes sense intellectually speaking, but did I include the heart in this decision? Did I include the heart in this brain map, in this, in this brainstorm? And it's like, this is one of the big things I feel like Pluto and Aquarius will help us do. it help us transform as a collective, how we operate in the mental body or what would be considered the 3D. And mm. it'll get us to operate it's kind of part of the transformation that we need in order to get more into the causal realm or the four Ds, where it's like, okay, in our physical body, you know, we can align and resonate with the heart frequency and still allow the mind to guide when it's useful, but not when it's not. And I say that because I feel like, you know, in our heads, we really let our mental processing get the best of us most times whether to worry or anxiety about x y or z and it's like i feel like this transit will really help us in this opposition as well to start taking heartfelt action you know not thinking about what is it going to get me what it, where is it going how is this going to you know support my mastermind plan my concept the aquarius is like look you know create the structure create the mastermind concept but leo is like but act from the heart anyways you know, relate with others from a heart space anyways. And like, if we can do that, I feel like ultimately, this is the kind of transformation we need to evolve beyond the mental body. 
Oh, sweet. I was literally about to type the point out. I wanted to remember. But, um, yeah, it's interesting you say that because when we're actually, like, to jump forward a little bit, when we're talking about the Venus retrograde, Venus mm-hmm. goes retrograde directly before conjuncting Regulus, aka the heart of the Leo constellation, one of the four royal fixed stars, the star correlated to the Archangel Raphael, the regulator, right? Where, what degree Venus, is it at right now? Uh, right Re- Re- now, Regulus? Regulus is at, like, 28, 29 degrees, Leo. I thought you were okay, asking. Okay, cool. Of Leo? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, so and Venus goes retrograde at 28 degrees, like literally right before it, right? So mm-hmm. it's gonna be like really interesting because it's gonna be it's gonna be like, oh, 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 we're getting there. This is what passions are true aligned with you, and then nope, smack you right back in your old past passions for you to be like, Oh damn, I thought we were getting somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's gonna be interesting because it's kind of gonna be like with that with like everything in life. Cause if you thought last retrograde season was hard with at most six planets in retrograde. We will be having a period at the end of the summer where there are seven planets in retrograde. So, you know, uh, in a low vibrational sense, um, yeah, for lack of a better term, if you're riding on that low frequency, you're fucked, you know. But in a higher vibrational sense, if you choose to look out and really open up your mind in terms of why we are reflecting on these degrees, you'll be good. And we will be here to help you do that. So don't just be like, oh, retrograde means stop. Don't do that. So just like basically, but but back to the original point, Um, Venus in Leo regulating that, it's basically going to be walking you through all the steps that you're going to need, like as we discussed in terms of like healing your passion and really having that moment to like be yourself and be your individual aspect and really dive into that sense of like identity that you were searching for from youth. But basically, Mm. (laughs) you know, the jailer just said she'll be sky high. (laughs) I love Uh, Venus and Leo. I know, uh, right? We're listening. We're listening. No, no, no. I got you. I was about to make a Ben Affleck joke, but um, which I'm gonna call it. But um, yeah. So it's basically going to walk you all the way through that, and then basically what's going to happen is either a past passion from that moment in time of that person who you may have been back in that space where you identified with that full aspect of yourself of you really being an individual, whether that being with an ex you liked, whether that being with an old habit that you really liked, whether that being with an old you know friend or partner that you used to like that person or that entity and that energy will probably come back to you the same way that like the whatever thoughts you're having while because it's going to be around the uh let me remember so pluto officially enters capricorn back on june 11th and then it Mm -hmm. it goes direct on october 10th right and i've always Mm -hmm. seen the numbers 10 10 especially when they pop up as angel numbers as get back to work you dumbass but um they're just personally but um, basically, like with that being the case, okay. So during the the Leo retrograde, Pluto will be retrograded Capricorn. Damn, straight up. Oh man, that's gonna be interesting. But um, the point being is like while you're in that moment of reconsidering your past status and what that means to you, all of those past passions and past pleasures that you potentially came from that will be pulling up, trying to pull you back. And like, there's gonna be a lot more going on because around that time specifically, there will be four or five other planets retrograde because you know there's just gonna be so many retrogrades really sitting you back, being like, "This is who you used to be. Don't do that or keep doing, and it's up to you. You know, figure that out." But it's just gonna be so interesting to see how like, I don't know. It's like, um, personally, I'm gonna have an interesting time watching people who are a little like less aware, like go through that just because i'll be curious about what they decide and who's going to be coming forward and who's going to not kind of like you said and like uh you know i i mean i can't say that's like a good thing it'll be really just a distraction from my own pain and more or less gemini just nonsense but um which i'm gonna call it but like uh all right now i'm just i'm getting too broad here what, what popped out to you um in truth i was i was looking at running a retreat later in the year so in truth uh-huh. i was thinking to myself hmm I wonder how these retrogrades, these seven, will 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 hit in, will, will tap into that that uh, retreat frequency. I was trying to, I was that was that's the truth. Like that's what my mind, huh? That's like the perfect time for a retrograde, at least in my opinion. Well, I'm happy to hear that because October was the month that we were really considering. So at this point now, I'm just working the logistics behind the scene. You thinking about having a retreat smack dab in Scorpio season amongst the retrogrades? That's like the Bro. best idea ever. Astro Shaman, I'm not here for the the the, the, the jokes in the games. So like I'm, I'm like I'm trying to really bring people through some stuff. Like like you know, I'm like let's let's do this. So that sounds like absolutely. 
I mean, it's Every definitely month. Scorpio season is always the deepest healings. I mean, in my personal opinion, like for sure. Like, you know, if I think about this last one, how this hit me, this then in November, <laughs> these eclipses, bro. You saw how my eyes went twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> the last one. I mean, I, I think it won't be as bad this year, quite frankly. I mean, no, I'm it'll, be rising. it'll be quicker. Yeah, like it's all the Scorpio harder, stuff really was quick. way too. Those eclipses were just like, okay, come on. Bro. Do you know how many people got divorced? I, I can. Think I, of I've seen so now. many divorces. I'm still seeing so many divorces mm -hmm. um, because during this time frame, South Node was going Libra. No, so how many more yeah. marriages are being let go? Oh God! How many? How many God. more relationships? Are, are going to be on the fringe because people are basically questioning their integrity and they're looking at like, damn, when did I compromise so deeply that I lost myself? And that's going to be a very, um, that's what's happening. They're going to be like, yo, when did I compromise so much that I lost myself? And, and, you know, I've seen this theme in my life that like what I just said, it happened to me. And I've seen this theme that all these things happened to me just enough time before they happen to the world like just mm -hmm. enough time before they happen to the world so that i can like figure out for myself before it happens to others well how the hell am i going to walk them through this and I, I i feel like for me the best i can explain that is just me being a five line and in human design as that old heretic is like well the experience was there like i had to walk through this and i had to figure this out and that's how I can walk other people through it when it comes. And so that's a big one. I can tell you right now that it's like when I had to come to terms with when did I compromise in a relationship and basically give up my joy in order to make the partner that I was with happy enough because they weren't even really happy. They were still miserable and I wasn't miserable. You know what I mean? So I say happy enough on false pretense. You know, literally, like, to the point of everyone getting to the point where they no longer can tolerate. And I really feel like this is one of the next big things happening with um, Libra in the South Node. Because once Aries goes in that in that lead position, I mean, like, you know, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Rahu in, in the Vedic sense, but it's like Rahu mm -hmm. or North Node, it also amplifies, you know, the low frequencies in order to get us aligned with where we're going. So it's not as simple as, oh, the North Nodes and Taurus, you know, we're all getting towards a simpler life and a simple existence. It's like, no, greed will come in your face and it will show you why you need that simpler existence. You know what I'm saying? It'll show you why you should stop struggling with the concepts of your own worth and value. But it's going to bring your worth into question. It's going to bring your self-esteem into the limelight in a way that will challenge you. It doesn't happen by oh we're just just magically going to be there so if i look at it from an aries standpoint in relationships it's like okay damn we're going to have to face the reality that i've never chose myself first and that i brought that bs narrative that being selfish it was a bad thing and now i don't know how to be selfish enough sounds <laughs> so like now the year of celibacy. My, huh sounds like the year of celibacy for me not for me personally but like it just it sounds like everyone <laughs> going to be going that way you know what i'm saying I mean, if I'm being honest, the, one of the best things that people could do is take um, a part-time celibacy, celibacy. And I say part-time because um, the Wait, slingshot- you mean, like, five or like for like a couple months? I mean, like, you know, at a personal level, you decide for yourself. Like, if I think about it for myself, I've made personal commitments and said, look, you know, I'm taking a three-month hiatus. Mm. I don't care if I'm with somebody or not. And it's the kind of simplicity of like thinking of it like, I don't know if this was Moses, so don't quote me, but I believe it was Moses or one of these prophet walking guys. They were like walking and his wife, he told his wife, you know, while I'm on this particular mission, I can't afford to have sex with you. It has nothing to do with my attraction. It has everything to do with, I need to stay focused right now. And so, you know, because it's like, I'm leading somebody that's more than myself. I'm leading the people across enemy lines across a walk of faith and it's like a walk of faith requires presence mm. so you know when i look at the north node going to aries understand aries is a lot of things one of them is the snake's tongue the tongue of the snake 
So it has the ability to charm somebody's pants off. This is one of the Aryan themes. And literally by its speech, by talking, by its charm, um, by its innocence, you know, just like literally it's pure innocence, pure joy for life and its pursuit for it as a sexual deviant because it is a sexual deviant energy. You know, it is still Mars and we forget it's not Scorpio. So it didn't have the time. It's not taking the time to strategize how it's going to get in your panties. It's just getting in them <laughs> to, like today. You know, it's like I'm going to catch you off guard and get in there today. Get in right now. But that has no, no, no. It will show us pretty clearly like a consequence, you know, to not maintaining your original impulses. All of us on the North know our impulses will come to the forefront and they're going to show us which one of them are detrimental to the direction that we're actually taking and where we say we want to go and how we're essentially not utilizing our life force energy in a way that gets us where we want to go. Life will bring people STDs in this time frame. Damn. I, I, it will bring STDs. I'm telling you right now, it will bring STDs. It will bring babies. Um, it will bring, a, a, an, um, you know, just an exponential amount of raw sex and non-committal sexual relationships on top of that, like literal one night stands. And it doesn't have to be one night. It could be three nights, but it's like they will come um, and it's going to challenge what we say we want. And it's going to show us how we avoid deeper commitments with ourselves, which ultimately supports a lasting relationship. And that's going to be some major themes. So I know that's a whole different talk, but um, a, sexual energy is going to be everywhere once the North Node hits Aries. It's going gonna, it's gonna to rage and you're going to feel it. Everybody listen to this. You're going to walk by people and they're not even going to say anything. You're just going to feel it. They're going to be like, she wants to fuck me. And, you know, it's the same thing, vice versa. He wants to, he wants to, mm. And you're going to kind of get these, like, it's going to almost be like telekinetic. They're going to communicate this to you where, like, it won't even be a conscious thing because Aries is not a conscious symbol. And this is one of the main things to know about Aries. It's unconscious. It literally is not thinking. It's acting. It, res the, it responds in the world to action. The world and the environment around it responds to the action that Aries takes. So it's like, you know, I see somebody saying sacral authority. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I have a sacral authority. And I could tell you, this is definitely some of my younger college phases, especially that time frame when I'm in this heartbroken stage. And this is the major thing, because understand, when you break a marriage, when a marriage is in the South Node and it's being released and let go, and you've been married to this person for 15 years, and you've basically forsaken your own individuality and your own personal freedom, which is why the marriage crashed. These are the times you must watch for the most because this will be the most raw sexual passion. And we're just going to mingle with people with no thought, just the raw passion of, I have not touched another male in 16 years out of my devotion to this person. And now it's like getting one lick can turn into a sugar rush where it becomes cocaine. And now you just want to start sticking or humping any and everything, and it will happen likely at an uncontrollable rate, at an uncontrollable rate, and we'll be forced to face ourselves because Aries is one of the symbols that I don't think is spoken about much, but Aries is one of the symbols that really avoids, as adults, the deeper internal work, and it externalizes sexual energy in matters like what I just said. That's one outcome. Um, but ultimately, it's a part of not doing its own internal shadow work. Aries runs from shadow work. This is something I'm saying as an Aries myself. Aries runs from shadow work um, until it doesn't. Well, usually when it doesn't, the, the shadow is kind of gone. And I mean that in the sense of it's been externalized. Say it again. The shadow has gone. Yeah, because it's been externalized. There ain't nothing hiding it now. The sun's on it. Right, but that externalization, it's still distracted. It still didn't have to do its internal work because now, like, this is why this is why now more and more bodies start piling up because it's like, if as long as I can keep catching new bodies, new mm -hmm. bodies, I never have to stop and see myself. It's only at the point when it gets completely exhausted and drained and it realizes that I get no fulfillment from this 
and it starts to feel dead inside that it realizes I'm an Aries or I have Aries energy, whatever, Mars, Venus, whatever. And I lost my light. Damn. And it's at, it's at that point when the Aries feels it lost its light, it lost its innocence, it lost its joy for life. That's when it starts to face the, its own personal shadow. Mm. That, and yeah, that's a very different time frame. So in the meanwhile, that's the reason why so many bodies rack up. Mm. That's the reason why so many sexual encounters will happen. And mind you, again, these are people, I'm talking 10, 15 years of marriage. They have so much sexual, and people who just married that long don't have sex. So there's so much sexual energy pent up. They start hating their partner. They don't want to be touched by them. And they're not even really hating their partner. There's just so much rejection on so many levels, internally, externally. Some it's just so many levels of like, you know, disgust within marriages at a sexual level and the obligations take over and you know they have kids they have a home they have bills they have these things and they will get so occupied by their responsibilities that they have this midlife crisis of sexual frustration so these are going to be the main things i'm talking about it's like well what happens when you go through years of sexual frustration you stay out of some false sense of loyalty this is going to be very difficult energy for the world to process because it will happen it will still be a collective frequency even if you're not the married person going through such things Ooh. you might be the victim of that person coming out of the marriage coming out of the relationship you might be the one on the other side that gets dogged out exactly you, exactly so you know you might have literally been innocent in this whole process but i mean how innocent if you attract that frequency i don't know you know you wanted something <laughs> you wanted something Damn. so again the time will come the time will come we'll talk we'll talk about that i love i love sex talks i really do i had a whole like year and a half where i did nothing but sex talks what the hell how'd that happen it's like i said all these things happen to me before it happens to the world it's just how mm. my life operates it's it's how i'm able to walk people through when the, when the time comes the best I can explain it is, I think J Lo would know this best. Um, I'm a five line. Mm. Like, in times of crisis, generals get called, and the five line is considered generals or leaders or heretics. So when crisis comes, the world looks for leadership mm. to that particular crisis. And at a certain point of my life, this was a crisis. Dang. I'm not, I'm not saying anything I just said is personal experience that has manifested somehow. Mm -hmm. And it's me finding my way out of that loop. That's crazy. You know, that's literally the it. It's like me finding my way out of that loop. Well, I guess on, through all that conversation, what I'm kind of curious about is uh, when the hell are all these alignments going to chill out? Have you seen that yet? Or are we still like got a couple of years ahead of us? Bro, the lime is never gonna chill, yo. I know, I, I know. <laughs> not, not, not that I see, not that I see. I feel like yeah. the time that it chilled out was this Taurus season. This is Taurus seasons are your time that you get to rest. If I look at it, it's like Taurus season is probably Taurus and Cancer energies are the times that you get to chill. Cancer feels a little bit tougher in my opinion because I it's agree. like you're more forced to introspect. But Taurus yeah. season is like when you get to chill, you know maybe libra season again you get to chill these are these venetian energies mm -hmm. but like at the end of the day um i feel like the only time it really gets to chill has nothing to do with the alignments it's everything to do with like personal evolution of consciousness Fair enough. where it's like it's how you, it's like i said you know with this gate 56 and leo mm -hmm. being able to allow yourself to get to that drunken state and look at life as a skit a play on the, you know when you get to see character roles right like everybody in the chat is a character they have a, they play a role they they add a certain sense of tragedy to the discussion or a sense of comedy that allows us to relieve ourselves from <laughs> really nothing if i get into if it's it, to relieve ourselves from nothingness like the boredom of nothingness it's like can we sit in the boredom of nothingness and still find joy and tragedy amusing um, 
you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like this is the bigger parts of it in all sincerity. It's like, for me, if I look at it, um, for a long time, like I just took in other people's auric fields and I didn't even realize what the hell was reality. In, in all sincerity, most of a lot of my life, like many years of my life, I did not understand my own personal reality. Um, I was just so engulfed. And that never really brought me peace. What brought peace was like when I recognized that I wasn't and then working on my own reality and like how I actually see the world. And in, re in, in my reality, how I see the world, it really is a fun place to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very fun place to be. There are moments that are dull and boring, but I've learned to embrace those dull, boring moments because they're very important. Um, you know, without those dull, boring moments and without being able to embrace the dull, boring moments, uh, what happens is chaos, literal chaos, um, where it's like you start creating trouble just out of boredom, you know, yeah. like just out of like, I don't know how to sit in nothing. And it's like when I, I you ask like, so again, I don't think it's a transit thing when things chill out. It's when I think we can sit in the chaos, sit in the boredom, sit in the middle of a death and just be cool. Like literally realize that, you know, again, detachment is not that you own nothing, that nothing owns you. Mm. So it's like, you know, when somebody dies, like that person death no longer owns me. So I can sit and hold this man and love him as myself and not be attached to it. Now, at the time frame when that happened in real life, that was not the scenario. It haunted me. But yeah. it's that experience that, you know, working through how it haunted me, that helped me realize, you know, that he was a fiction of my imagination. I literally needed to create him in order to understand the illusion. The separation yes. gap, you know? And realize that like, look, I just externalized somehow that he's dying, but I was dying. I was transforming my entire identity. I was disintegrating my identity at that framework of life. I was leaving the spaces of exercise as we know it. And at the time I stepped into personal development which eventually became astrology and everything else you see now. Mm -hmm. And eventually I will leave behind the identity of astrology, which I honestly feel like I already am in a lot of ways. And that became the disintegration of myself as an astrologer because it was blocking me from becoming more. Mm. So what are you going That's for now? Is it just astro shaman or broader or what are we talking about? To be honest, that's just a name. Like, like I don't really identify with Astro Shaman. If I'm being honest, it's just a name that people in the world understand enough as for what they believe they need. Yeah, yeah, I get all that. But I'm just saying, what I'm asking is like to to disintegrate your identification from that. What are you like moving towards in your mind? Then nothing. Oh, okay. This is this is kind of the point I'm saying in the first place. It's like it's the it's the it's part of the mindset that we have to go towards something that is a part of the trap. Gotcha. It's like there's nothing. It's like now again, there's a mystical element to what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. Part of it is just simply true. Another part of it is not satisfying to the mind because mm -hmm. it's like, well, well, what do you mean nothing? And it's like, well, the mind is not satisfied to that, but the heart is because the heart now has space because only from an empty cup, right, can you, like, have enough space to follow a joy or a passion. If, if I'm overflowing, you know, you always hear this saying, you know, pour from an overflowing cup, yada, yada, yada. But it's these same languages and terminology that trap us in the matrix. It's like mm. when you allow yourself to be empty, you can have enough space to enjoy what comes next when it comes without trying to rush the process and create drama or distractions to get us out of what feels or seems like boredom. Mm. 
but it's like, like, is it boring? You know, it, it, it's it's very it's in some ways it's complicated because it's it start it's starting to shift the entire topic of this conversation in a whole different level. But it is what Gate Sixty actually speaks about when you speak about the the frequencies of justice. Mm -hmm. Justice has nothing to do with the simple laws and all this. It's like it's like being able to. This is really complicated because, again, like I said, no matter how I verbally announce this, it's not going to be satisfying to the mind. And this is a part of the current issue that we face as a collective. The mind needs to feel satisfied. It's like I need to be able to wrap my mind around this intellectually speaking, but it completely ignores intelligence. And it's like when I say intelligence, it's not intellect. Intelligence is not intellect. Intelligence is like my body, your body is in, has a natural intelligence. Right. You shit when you need to shit. <laughs> you don't need to demand. You don't need to, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you, you sleep. Your body metabolizes food. Your heart beats on its own. It doesn't require, it's an involuntary muscle. This is like a natural intelligence, right? So it's not intellect. There's a natural intelligence to the universe, right. which really requires us to do nothing. Which means when I realize that I myself as an astrologer is completely disintegrating from the identity of being an astrologer, it means that I don't need to know what I'm becoming. I'm just going to become it. All I need to do is sit and watch. And if I can sit in the dullness, it gives me space to recognize the synchronicity and the clear audience messages, this is one of the major ways that it comes through for me. Things, entities, gods, call it what you want. They just whisper to me. They just whisper things. I'm like, at, when I was younger, it used to drive me crazy because I would think people were in the room. But like, as I got older, I realized like, ah, uh, these are just my guides. They whisper uh -huh. things and it's very clear. It's very clear. They're like, now you go this way. Okay. And how well we can accept that or whether we fight that, <laughs> This is also part of this, this, this distraction from avoiding our destiny, our purpose, like where we're all going as a collective. So my point of what I'm saying is, is as human beings, do we have free will? Absolutely. Are we really in control of the system and the cogs? No. We think we are, and that's what distracts us and holds us down as a collective. And until we collectively understand that, we're not going to mutate to the point where we're no longer even humans. This is one of the big things that's happened with the U.S. and Pluto and Capricorn. They're being, they're, they're being forced to disintegrate with their careers and how they've identified with their careers, how they've identified with success, how they've identified with recognition, how they've identified, well, how do you climb a ladder to become a billionaire? All of that is disintegrating, which is mm -hmm. why the dollar needs to be attacked because that's what people care about in the U.S. They care about money. That's definitely true. They care about money. So you have to take what the person cares about the most. This is what I found is, is very important when it comes to disintegration of like a scorpionic or ego death. You have to take what they are most obsessed about. And only when they realize that they can survive without it, do they begin to embrace the next path. But we mm -hmm. have to actually experience that not only can I survive without it, but life is better with it, out it. Like life has like evolved for me. Like what I find meaning in is now completely different. And this is where Sagittarius comes next in the mutable energy of change. When it comes to morals and philosophies, like now I'm not attached to that obsession anymore and I've completely allowed myself to mutate my beliefs around this thing. Ah, but Pluto is the channel of mutation. See, and it, what she's saying is prime example. And this is kind of one of the things I was saying about earlier in the talk with um, what comes after February 2024, when we get into the energies of, um, I said anticipation, and I think the, the I forget what the, the shadow frequency was of it, but um, we allow ourselves to be misinterpreted. We realize like it's okay to not be understood. So what Jayla just put right here, I have this channel. It goes from the root chakra. Thank you, Jayla, for this. You gave me the next point. 
See, like me not trying to figure out where to go next, it gave me the next point. Mm -hmm. It's in the root chakra and it connects to the sacral chakra. And it's considered a mutative gate. And I have this four channel. I have the three, which is considered my moon in Aries, where my degrees are at. And I have this in mm, Capricorn Aquarius, literally the, the change of the two. And this gate, it speaks for basically it's a mutation that we don't know what's on the other side. This is one of the major things. The other side would be considered the three, which is like innocence and, you know, allowing ourselves to follow our innocent and artistic expressions, our artistic, creative, childlike energy. It gives us a, a brand new clean sleep if we can follow that innocence, which is difficult because society does not respect the inner child. Okay, great. Gate 60 is saying here are these rules, these structures that we need to start embracing things with a certain sense of realism that... You know what? At the end of the day, I need to register my business because if I collect this money and I actually make this successful, they will tax me in a way that I will lose everything. That's part of getting realistic with the structures that exist. I need to register this LLC. Okay, fine. By doing that, I can then begin to work within the constraints of the systems and the structures that exist, not in spite of, because working against the current systems that are already going to decay anyways is really a losing battle it's going to decay on its own i just need to wait for that transformation to happen and this is one of the biggest hardest parts for i think all humans it's the waiting part it's like well how long and this is like you know how long well what do i do while i wait and so is these questions aka the mind mental body that basically destroy us and speed us up which is false we can't really speed crap up anyways the trance is going to happen when it happens it doesn't matter how far out i predict venus retrograde and leo and what might happen and what star it connects to it has to get there it has to then go back in retrograde and then it has to come back to meet it again at 28 degrees or so in regulus i can't rush that process it doesn't matter what my predictions are like like what i predict about it matters not like what will it really do at the end of the day because when we're talking mutative gates that we don't know what's on the other side, well, what's the point of predicting it? Which is why, like, in general, like, right now we have this Mars and Leo opposition. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the live now. Did I know about this coming weeks ago? Absolutely. I knew the transit was coming, but I didn't do it until now. Like, it's happening right now as we speak mm -hmm. here it is <laughs> so joe uh on a wrap-up message of everything we spoke about today mm -hmm. what do you feel like people need to hear no matter what like just the whole oh, yeah. this is like this is kind of like stepping back five steps from what we were just talking about and everything we spoke about today if you were to just pause Close your eyes and just like let it come to you. What do the people need to hear today? No holds bar, no sugarcoating or nothing. Why would you sugarcoat? Did I sound like somebody to sugarcoat to you? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know. I just like the first thing that came to mind was don't give a shit. Like it just is. It's really a part of it. And all since the best I can see, that's just really true. But I, I feel like in like a in a broader sense it's like i feel like people really really should take into account like so what if you do dive into your past self so what if you do like just like i, I really see it as just like broadly just being yourself and a b testing life you know like if this doesn't work try something else like why are you associating yourself with um i think it's gonna like rearrange like people's passions and like, it's gonna like, I feel like the biggest thing about this opposition is it's just gonna separate like the association of self with your passion, if that makes any sense. Mm. You know, like really just yeah. like identifying with that, like, like you'll be able to fully realize that you achieve the best results when you're detached and you're just kind of like objectively looking. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So no, then, when you, yeah. So then when you truly focus on like, like it'll just be like 
the concept of self and the passion will just become two separate entities and you'll be realigned with like, okay. And it'll, I like, it'll, it'll sort of like, like for some people in an extreme sense, it really feel, will feel like you're kind of like moving through life in that like third person, like video game setting where you are just looking above you as a character and you're like, okay, I'm passionate about this right now, or at least I have this passion. And you'll just kind of really just be moving towards what you want to do. And if it doesn't work out, you try something else and you try again later and you really just take that step back. And I feel like the the main thing that kind of resonates with um with uh, me and what I've been like personally going through is like the concept of if you could hold it in your head, you could hold it in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no difference. Like it's still just a vision that's coming you from your mental field. So if you can create from within and fully detach from all these external circumstances and really get into that space ahead of time in terms of like not wanting to be, what's the word? Like, uh, what, what was the 2024 thing you said? February? I can't hear you. Bathroom break. Um, I think 2024, Pluto moves at, at past two degrees of Aquarius. No, 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 no. You, you said something about, like, um, oh, not caring about being misinterpreted. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so yeah. This whole This whole opposition is um you're gonna start doing that within before you do it without if that makes any sense for sure so it's like everybody's gonna be like all right well i don't understand why i'm passionate about this and myself or why i want to go talk to that like old person or why i want to go dive into this old habit that i had this Mm -hmm. is what i want to do okay Mm -hmm. it's fun is it helping me maybe is it not no okay let's move on and it's just like there isn't going to be as much of that like mental chatter that people have Sure. But yeah, that's good. Yeah. Sure. Um, I feel like, like in conjunction with what you said, Taurus and Cancer are really honestly teaching us something major, right? For and sure. It's a crazy it's sex like, time. Yeah, right. It, it is pretty wild. And one of the biggest things that I feel like is teaching is one, the importance of rest mm. and how, how much it can put you in the feminine energy, the feminine vibrations. And as we get into those feminine vibrations, we don't need to focus on where we're going or why we're going. We can just receive the direction. We can yeah. receive the abundance. We can receive the answer on, well, here's what your value is today. You know, uh, you know, you play your you play Taurus where it's at and how it transits you. But I feel like the major, major thing is um, it's like these energies don't make it a priority to present how you stand your ground or what it means to stand your ground or to like, and I'm using the see in the chat. It's like, you're just going to stand your ground and you don't really need to explain it. You just can receive. This is what it means to receive, to stay in your ground. And in the process, because Taurus and cancer are these individual energies, they're really kind of one of the major preparatory systems for us as we shift before we start interacting with other people, right? Because Leo is the first energy that starts interacting with other people. And so it's like, once cancer finally gets all the way out of there, it's all this time and this individual work that we're doing. And all the answers we received during this time frame, just because the tremendous amount of feminine energy in the sky. It's like, have you rested? Have you take the time to chill and relax so that you can take this with you when you do interact with others, Leo season to Scorpio season? Because it's like, you will interact with others. But we don't want you to forget that taking the time to slow down, to pause, to shift when you get an intuitive punch to shift Mm. is what allows you to interact with others and stand your ground. That is what allows you not to people please. That is what allows, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it is what allows you to allow other people to mistake what you said and to not take it personal and realize that's just your problem currently. And that's okay. Like, and by me allowing you to have that problem to yourself and not having to get involved and engage with the heat of that, I know that you'll actually get there. Because if I'm not allowing myself to be your distraction, I'm actually helping you and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm not allowing you, if I, if I recognize that you're using me as a distraction and I'm just standing my ground for myself, and I'm not allowing it, and I'm taking myself out of that bubble, 
at the end of the day, either you're going to pass it on to somebody else, or you're going to look back at yourself internally and be like, all right, like, I actually realized that, that like, this was, this was on me. And if we start taking personal accountability in these moments, I feel like it's ultimately just going to support us through this opposition because stress, war, um, you know, and passion <laughs> are all going to be mixed in. And it's like the, none of the war that we're going through right now is personal. And I, I honestly believe that. Like, it's not personal. We're all going to get checked at an ego, a God level, okay, or when we just believe that we're just the smartest or the, the hottest stuff on the planet. We're going to get checked. It's going to happen in ways that we probably don't expect. But ultimately, I feel it's going to happen much softer as long as we keep thinking, you know, what will my heart do? And I feel like this is the major, major thing to this whole opposition energy. It's like, what would my heart do? Some people like to say, what would Jesus do? <laughs> you know, in this, in, this, in this moment of passion, this moment of heat, in this moment of discussion, in this moment of whatever. And I'm just looking at it in the moments like, you know, if my heart was just as bright as it can be, what would it do? You know, if it was just as loving as it can be, if it was as loving as it was, before I was heartbroken, that, that point that we all crave, you know, before you had your first heartbreak, what if I can behave and act from that loving position? And I feel like that's one of the most beautiful places that we could be. I feel like this heart power is one of the major outlets of harmony that we can align with during this opposition energy. It's like, what would the heart do? And the, the hardest part to this is, well, what happens when you interact with somebody that is not doing what the heart would do? Yeah. How do you do what the heart would do anyways and let them have their moment of glory? And these are the major, major pieces. Because if you're actually operating on her frequency, you can allow that and not be impacted by that. And you can transmute that frequency. And it becomes fuel. And that was beautiful. I think he said what you said. Yeah, he you did. You can hold it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. It's facts, though. Dodgeball mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Taurus definitely does that. You know, um, I've been getting in tune with just the understanding of Taurus and its holding nature. Mm. You know, if you can hold that idea, you can hold that thought, you can hold that manifestation. Long enough, time will time will show. It'll be in front of you. Saturn and Cancer. Ooh. Yeah, I took a three hour nap like two days ago, middle of the day. I was yeah. like I was like already laying in bed. Mm. And then I just was like <sighs> <laughs> It was wild, yo. It's like I it's like it, something just came over me. But it's kinda like what I was just saying, like this this feminine energy of receiving, like the received message was Yo, just turn the TV off and go to sleep. And I was like, okay. Like it was great. No alarm, you know, know what I gotta do next. Just listen. Yo, just turn the TV off and go to sleep. Okay. I woke up, it was three hours later. I was like, where am I? <laughs> I love that feeling. It's the best. You know, you know you have the best sleep when you don't have stank breath. And you're just like, and you have that nice coating of saliva on your teeth, and you're just like, oh. That's like good. <laughs> That's the only way I know how to explain it. I think you're exactly that. I think I think a I think a, a, a human would continue to behave with that pureness. I think it's exactly that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, with that, like it's one of these things where like if and when we fall out of touch with that pureness, it's okay. Like it's for anybody on the other side, like it's okay. Like, if you get mad, understand that that's just the anger showing you what the boundary is that you cross yourself, your own boundary, or that you allow somebody else to cross. Mm -hmm. And then that allows you to, when you can just embrace that, and it's like, okay, cool, I need to set a boundary here. The biggest thing is, can we let go? Like, right, like, um, I think the, the guy, the psychologist, brain guy, whatever, I don't know who it was, 
Oh, oh Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. He was like, anything that you hold on to for longer than five minutes, you're addicted to. He was like, we've done this scientific research study. He was like, no matter yeah. what it is, he's like, if you're angry for longer than five minutes, you're addicted to anger. I don't know about all that. I found it to be true. Oh, really? I'm not kidding. Because I wanted to be like, huh? When I first heard it. And I was like, you know, I hit my whole skepticism. And then I started realizing, oh, snap. I was actually addicted to anger. Mm. And I realized, like, there's a big difference between being angry, like, just angry, just out there, and then specifically directing your anger intensely at a single person. And I realized there's a very big difference to be mad about something and not even fully understand what you're mad about, and then to be angry at a specific person and direct it oh. at them like an arrow. And then to hold it. And this is the key. Like, this is why I love Aries. It's like, can you have an angry outburst and then let it go? And let that angry outburst be, you know, the driving force that actually started to create resolutions because something wasn't communicated for long enough. And you needed to have that burst of anger. And it's not directly at the person. And it's just like, look, this moment makes me angry for whatever reason. And I feel like when we allow ourselves to start, I had to take practice with this in all sincerity. Like when I allowed myself to start having those moments, I realized this isn't so personal. It's just a revelation. And it's like, well, what is it revealing? And it's like when I allowed that, then it's like the whole key thing with us and the hardest part that I feel like took me training on the follow-up was, well, how not to stay mad? Mm. Like, like, okay, cool. I got the point out. I communicated what made me angry, but why am I still angry? And that, that is the part I realized, like, you really can be addicted to anger. Um, you can really be addicted to anything, quite frankly. Anything could be addiction. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is the discussion. That said, hit the thumbs up, hit the likes button. If you're on Joe's channel, if you're not, check out his YouTube, check out his Instagram. Um, it's literally how you see it here. Oh, you don't, you don't see that. Hold on. You'll see it up in the top, uh, of my YouTube video. I don't know where you're watching this. I'm sure you already have him if he's on your channel. Um, let me pull this up for you. Where is it? Okay. Right here. Yes. Display names. Okay. So, so if you see right here in the parentheses, you'll see solar systems. Um, uh, you could check that on YouTube. You could check that on, um, IG and it's and it's the same. Um, and so I definitely recommend y'all all check them out. Wild Harmony, good to see you. I see you. So I feel that I hate when I get angry as an Aries. Uh, emotional authority. Oh yeah, see the emotional authorities, y'all, y'all the ones. Mm. Cause it's not even always just your anger either. It's like you have that type of it, it would be like part collective, you know? It's like mm. the emotional solar plexus, it, it, it's kind of what I was saying. We're all leaving from this mind, mental. Mm. Ajna, if you will, and the head, and we're moving into the solar plexus, which would be like this emotional center. I think you had an emotional authority, matter of fact. Oh, I so, know. Yeah, it's like this is the magic. When we get here as a collective, we can all start just embracing the purity of life. So, mm -hmm. th thank you, J Lo. It was good to see you. Uh, Starlander, uh, Uraeus, Vanessa, everybody up in the chat. Really, I love you all for being here. Hannah, Check two one two. We'll we'll tap in soon. Um, Joe, I appreciate you. This is an impromptu. Yeah, we'll tap.